Matt Charles, we thank you. There's been a buzz around Bowling Green, Kentucky for about the last 13 months or so. This Western Kentucky team has the crowds coming in, and they've got Middle Tennessee in town tonight as well. Big game in the Sun Belt Conference. Two teams with second place up for grabs here tonight at Houchin Smith Stadium. Both of these teams have lost to Louisiana Monroe, which is 4-0 in conference play. But second place, sole possession of the number two spot is up for grabs tonight between these two rivals. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to the broadcast booth. Adam Amin on hand. Two teams that could be playing against power conference schools once bowl season rolls around. Sunbelt is very deep. Western Kentucky snubbed for a bowl last year despite going 7-5. and five. I don't think anybody's going to overlook them this season. Meanwhile, Middle Tennessee needs one more win to become bowl eligible. For Tom Luganville, six wins may not necessarily in the Sunbelt get you to a bowl game. This is a very deep and dangerous conference. It absolutely is, Adam. And athletically, this is a conference that showcased its worth early in the season, beating some bigger opponents from BCS conferences. But what would be an even bigger statement? It's not how you start, it's how you finish. This is a conference where you're going to have potentially four, if not five teams that will be bowl eligible. But it's going to take, take more than six wins to get more consideration than this, the two allotted slots that the Sun Belt Conference has. Last two years, this has been a very close matchup. Double overtime last year, one point game two years ago. Give me a key with these two head coaches. I think it's all going to be about third down. For Middle Tennessee State on defense, they really struggle getting off the field. Conversely, Western Kentucky, converting 51% of their third downs. That's number one in the Sun Belt Conference, top 10 overall. K1 Dakes, the quarterback for Western Kentucky, has got to extend drives and keep that explosive offense from Middle Tennessee State off the field. Western Kentucky won the toss. They deferred Middle Tennessee. will get the ball first tonight. A rivalry that goes all the way back to 1914. And Reggie Watley, second in the Sun Belt, 30 yards per kick return, is back and ready to receive this Jesse Roy kick. It's a rivalry here tonight, Adam, that goes back to the FCS level where both Western Kentucky, Middle Tennessee State, members of the Ohio Valley Conference, they go back a long way. All the way back to 1914, off we go from Kentucky tonight. It's Watley from the six. Couple of moves out past the 25-yard line. 19-yard return, and Western Kentucky will take over. They've won 13 of their last, or rather Middle Tennessee, I should say, takes over. Wins over Georgia Tech, win over Memphis this year. They hung for a half with Mississippi State, and they're led by the second most efficient passer in the Sun Belt, Logan Kilgore. And Logan Kilgore, as you can see there, having a wonderful year statistically, but more importantly, it's the efficiency by which he is operating this fast-paced, high-tempo offense. They do not take many risks with the football and can be dangerous on the perimeter. Pistol look to start the night on first and ten, and it's Jordan Parker, the true freshman with a first down run out across the 40-yard line. 16 on play number one for this Middle Tennessee State offense, which comes in averaging 30 a ball game. You see the offense for Middle Tennessee State already switching personnel, getting into different formations, going into an H-back, fullback, tailback look. Getting lined up quickly, trying to get as many plays going as possible on offense for the Blue Raiders. It's going to be a contrast in styles tonight. Logan Kilgore will get the singles from the sideline. This is a Middle Tennessee State offense specifically that has been banged up this year. They're without Benny Cunningham for the last few games. They're outstanding running back. Four-man pressure. Kilgore with time, nearly picked off, and it's deflected into the hands of Kyle Griswood. Nine-yard pickup on that deflection. And it was tipped by Anthony Amos, the top wide receiver for Middle Tennessee State. Griswood was there. Yeah, Griswood was there. It was intended for Amos. And this is a high throw, early game jitters. Not so sure Amos is quite ready for the football. Luckily, Griswood comes down. Great focus, great ball skills to haul that pass in. To shy midfield, second and short. Parker. Kind of shuffle around. Should have enough for the first down. Got twisted down by Keontae Young from the safety spot. Will depend on the spot here. They needed the 49-yard line. They might have to bring out the chains early. We mentioned Middle Tennessee State. We've seen Jordan Parker in action on a couple of carries already. No Benny Cunningham, so it's been Parker and the transfer from LSU, Drayton Calhoun, Jeremiah Bryson, Watley. All these guys are doing the brunt of the carrying now. Well, and Jordan Parker, as you mentioned, just a true freshman, 6'1", about 210 pounds. 
know, very explosive guy, but also a power guy for a young back. And Coach Rick Stock still very impressed with his performance. And now for the first down, we mentioned Jordan Parker. He's one of our impact players tonight. Again, true freshman. One of the things that you look at with true freshmen at the running back position, can you handle the pass protections and do you protect the football? Jordan Parker thrust into duty when Benny Cunningham went down. Cunningham was the heart and soul of this defense. And this man right here, Andrew Jackson, in the middle of the defense for Western Kentucky, the Hilltoppers, they will have their hands full with his high-paced offense here tonight. Number one defense in the Sun Belt led by a potential NFL player in Jackson. As Parker again spun down inside the 45, give him a half dozen, He'll set up second and four. Keontae Young, the safety, with the tackle, the second already tonight. We mentioned it. Top defense in the Sun Belt for Willie Taggart's team of Western Kentucky. They are very good in terms of rushing the passer. Fourth in the country in sacks. Middle Tennessee State's line is very good. Play fake to Drayton Calhoun. Pressure is coming. And Kilgore got rid of it. It'll bring up third down. Arius Wright, the cornerback, off the edge on the blitz. Yeah, this was the right call defensively with the corner blitz coming right into the naked. That's the play action pass where the quarterback's exposed. He's naked, rolling out off of the play action pass. A smart play that time by Middle Tennessee State quarterback Logan Kilgore. Give him a third and manageable situation. They need the 39. Kilgore the checks, opening possession of the game. They need four, they'll go to the true freshman again for a first down. Jordan Parker out of Lawrenceville, Georgia. Needed four, got six. And again, the chain's moving. You said it early. We'll talk about third down a lot over the course of the night. A couple of conversions already. Absolutely, and right now the run game really clicking for Middle Tennessee State. That zone blocking scheme up front. Left guard Josh Walker, number 77. Outstanding that time, creating the hole for Parker. A win will give Middle Tennessee State bowl eligibility once again. Went to a bowl game in the 2010 season. It is to Calhoun off the right side. Bounces off a tackle and cuts it back the other way. Still on his feet for a first down inside the 25. A dozen hard-earned yards for the transfer from LSU. Drayton Calhoun is the type of player that provides the change of pace in this offense. You see the low explosive center of gravity, protects the football in a crowd, bounces off would-be tackles. Jonathan Dowling, number one, the transfer from Florida, misses the initial tackle there for Western Kentucky. Set it up at the 24. Parker on the run. Inside the 15-yard line, down to the 14, close to the first down marker. Young was there again in the third level for this Western Kentucky defense. This offensive line right now dictating terms at the line of scrimmage for Middle Tennessee State. Not something Western Kentucky is used to having had to happen to. They need one. Going back to Parker. Checks it to the outside. Gets the first down inside the 10. And it'll set up first and goal on a seven-yard game. Keontae Young is fifth tackle already, but we've seen a lot of action from the safety spot as the Blue Raiders get deep into the second and third levels. Right now, Middle Tennessee State lining up quickly in an unbalanced set on offense. Take a look at the offensive line of scrimmage down to the bottom of your screen. Pitch to Parker. A twisted down near the three. Xavier's Boyd, one of the linebackers for Western Kentucky with the stop after a gain of four. Middle Tennessee State and that offensive staff looking to catch Western Kentucky off guard by getting into an offensive alignment that Western doesn't know right now how to line up and then snapping the ball quickly. Very effective on that play, and what an impressive opening drive now for Middle Tennessee State. Anthony Amos, top of your screen. He's the lone receiver, potential NFL prospect. Give this to Parker, trying to work his way down to the goal line, near the one. Pick up a couple of yards. Boyd was there with the touchdown saving tackle. Third and goal here for Middle Tennessee State. Middle's lining up very, very quickly. You see Logan Kilgore barking out the formation. They're ready to snap the ball and go. The true freshman gets stuffed shy of the goal line. Keontae Young, a half 
dozen tackles. This one forces fourth and goal. If you've noticed the last two plays on offense in Middle Tennessee State, they did not spread out the Western Kentucky defense. Had they done that, might have been able to force Western Kentucky to widen the defensive alignment, not have as many players in the box. You bring in the tight end, like Kevin Pope, number 80, and the fullback, Kenneth Bruder, number 33, provide some beef in that run game. 19-yard field goal for Carlos Lopez. Split his two attempts last week. The Middle Tennessee, after driving the ball, settles for the three points. The number one defense comes through. Well, Keontae Young, the safety, stuffing the run at the goal for Western Kentucky. A big stand on defense, Middle Tennessee State. Still celebrating Halloween a day late, no problem. Middle Tennessee State drives down the field very impressively. And Jordan Parker doing the brunt of the damage, filling in for Benny Cunningham, the true freshman. 52 yards himself on that opening drive, but they settled for the field goal. Well, they settled for the field goal, but it was a good drive. When you replace a guy like Benny Cunningham, a lot's going to be expected of you. Now, obviously, you haven't seen a significant drop-off in talent if you've seen that opening drive from the true freshman Jordan Parker. But look at the numbers. Look at the average yards per rush they were getting for Benny Cunningham. That's not something you replace overnight. That's why you'll see a bit of a running back by committee tonight. Not only Jordan Parker, but again, the LSU transfer in Drayton Calhoun, who had a nice run uh, in about the middle portion of that 13-play drive that amassed 73 yards for Middle Tennessee State. Cunningham injured against FIU a couple of weeks back. Left knee injury out for the season. So after the field goal, Lopez kicks it away. And it will be Antonio Andrews from near the goal line. As an alley down the sideline and shoved out near the 40-yard line, he passes his head coach, Willie Taggart, for third all-time in all-purpose yards for that outstanding return. The best return man in the Sun Belt, 38 yards to set up great field position for Kwan Jakes, the most efficient passer in this league. He's done such a wonderful job developing in this new offensive scheme. Kwan Jakes was a spread option, shotgun player when he came here to Western Kentucky. Under Willie Taggart now, has learned how to work within the framework of the system, understands how to operate the game plan and play within himself. So efficient in the passing game as well. Antonio Andrews is the Sun Belt's best rusher. He's the tailback. On first and 10, he'll get the go. Five, yard line from about three, and set up second and seven. Omar McClendon with the stop, and Antonio Andrews is one of our impact players for Weston. Well, he's had six straight 100-yard rushing games, and when you're fulfilling the shoes of Bobby Rainey, Yep. From the last four years of Western Kentucky, you've got a lot on your plate. So, Roderick Blunt, we've high highlighted two middle linebackers. This one, 60 tackles on the year. He is going to have to step up and plug holes tonight with his power running game from Western Kentucky. Western Kentucky leads the nation in time of possession. They will grind on you. Second and six. Into traffic, an intended pass for Jack Doyle, who's an outstanding receiver. Wanted a flag, but... That'll bring up third and six. Watch Western Kentucky right now, just taking their time. They're going to use all of the clock that they can. They want to they want to ensure that they control the pace of the game. And you see the time of possession leads the FBS. A lot of people think that's an overrated stat, but if that stat fits into your offensive philosophy, it can mean everything. And if it's right into third down when they extend drives, 51% on third down, that's 10th in the country. Play clock running down, though. Did Willie Taggart get a timeout? He did. Timeout, WKU. That is their first charge of the first half. Second youngest head coach this in FBS, Willie Taggart timeout. uses his first timeout of the night. Six minutes in, Western Kentucky on its first drive. over the host Western Kentucky Hilltoppers and third down coming up right now for Western Kentucky 10th of the FBS leads the Sun Belt Conference expect the usage of the tight end two tight ends on the field right now and the personnel Adam 
for Western Kentucky. You get a little bit of a Stanford Cardinal feel with this offense, expect the tight ends. You know why they have the Stanford Cardinal feel. Willie Tagger, former assistant under Jim Harbaugh at Stanford before he took the job at his alma mater. On third down, quick slant, incomplete. No flag thrown intended for Antonio Andrews out of the backfield. A rare stop on third down for Middle Tennessee. We talked about how good Western is. Middle Tennessee ranked 116th on third down defense. Big stop early. Yeah, Middle Tennessee State on defense has given up a lot of yards, but their points per game in the top half of the Sun Belt Conference. That time, Craig Allen, number 35, doing a tremendous job matching up with Antonio Andrews out of the backfield. Third best average in the Sun Belt, Hendricks Brakefield. Just over 41 yards. Kyle Griswood back to return. Fair catch at the 21 yard line, a 37 yard punt. Well, national title hopes are on the line Saturday night. Big 12 matchup, Heisman hopeful Colin Klein, the unbeaten Wildcats, square off with the host Cowboys, their toughest test this year. Saturday night football presented by Windows 8, Oak State, K-State, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. Been really close the last five years. Kansas State, you know, I keep saying, you know what they are? They are Alabama, just with not quite the same level of athlete. They don't make mistakes, they don't give up big plays, they don't kill themselves, and they are extremely disciplined and well coached. 73 yards for a field goal on the first drive. They get it from the 21 here. Jordan Parker did the brunt of the damage on the opening drive. Keontae Young makes the stop after five yards there. Already 57 yards on the ground for Parker. As you're watching this offensive series unfold for Middle Tennessee State at home, Start counting the players in the box for Western Kentucky. When Middle Tennessee State spreads you out, if they see five in the box, right now they're six. If they see five, they're gonna run it. With six, they're likely gonna throw it. Ducking his head down, Parker. Close to the 30. Pick up four yards and a setup. A third and short situation. Andrew Jackson, the middle linebacker, on the stop. Another big third down. Middle Tennessee did a nice job of converting on their first drive, except on third and goal. Can't say enough about this offensive line. The big fellas, Darius Johnson, Micah James, Isaiah Anderson, Josh Walker up in that front, really pushing the pile and, as I stated earlier, dictating terms at the line of scrimmage. Hilltoppers load the box. Kilgore checking it at the line. And it's a direct snap to Parker. Make it Calhoun, the transfer from LSU. Three yards for the first down should be enough with the spot. How about that call? Look at that, a little Tom Foolery. The quarterback looked like he was coming to the sideline to get the call. Middle Tennessee State actually had a coach on the sideline in cahoots with him, jumping up and down as if he was trying to get a call. They set it at the 33. Logan Kilgore, a junior college transfer. Working out of the pistol. Here's Calhoun, nice job by Andrew Jackson to beat him in the hole. Our impact player, a future potential NFL prospect. Middle, Middle Tennessee State coaches say he's the best middle linebacker they will play. It's a great job seeing the ball in the backfield, shedding the blocker at the point of attack, and then clubbing up at the point of attack to plug those holes. Again, Middle Tennessee State's gonna have to start attacking the perimeter if Western loads the box. Jeremiah Bryson motions into the backfield and gets the carry. The redshirt freshman close to the first down, out across the 40 to the 42. Jonathan Dowling, the Florida transfer, the safety made the stop. Jonathan Dowling's a good one. He was an Under Armour All-American for us. A couple of years back, signed with the Florida Gators. Did not work out in Gainesville. He transfers here with Coach Willie Taggart and is one of three difference makers at all three levels of the field for this football team. In the defensive front, it's Quintero Smith. Linebacker spot we talked about in Andrew Jackson, the president, and Jonathan Dowling in the back end. Third and one. Straight up the gut, it's Parker into the open field. Jordan Parker inside the five to the end zone. Touchdown, Blue Raiders.
52 yards on the opening drive. He bursts for 58 in a score. The Blue Raiders are up 9-0. Well, if you recall the opening drive down on the goal line, Western Kentucky, they shot the gaps knowing there was no real estate behind them to have to cover. This time they shoot the gaps, and they don't make the tackle at the point of attack. There's nobody in the back end to play run support. Lopez at the field goal on the opening drive. And he puts Middle Tennessee up 10 to nothing on the longest career run for Jordan Parker. His old one was 27. 10 men in the box for the Hilltoppers. Not enough. Jordan Parker on fire for the Blue Raiders as they are now up 10 nothing over the Blue Raiders. ESPNU College Football Primetime is brought to you by the United States Marine Corps. The few, the proud, the Marines. Prior to warm-ups last week against North Texas, Coach Stock still pulled a black helmet out of a bag, and that fired up his troops in the locker room last week before they blew out North Texas. Jawan Harley, one of his safeties, joked around, said it was like Christmas when he pulled it out. We looked good and we played good, quote-unquote, from Jawan Harley. Fired up his troops a little bit. They've carried it over, seemingly, a 10-0 start. Middle Tennessee State and Arkansas State both this weekend looking for that sixth win to get them bowl eligible, which would put the Sunbelt Conference now at four teams. Gordon Parker, a big reason why Middle Tennessee State up 10 0 right now. Look at those numbers. That's already a career high for Jordan Parker, the true freshman. Well, that's because the career's not very long. <laughs> that helps when you when when that's the case, when you're about 10 games deep into it. Lopez to kick it away. Antonio Andrews and Tyree Robinson back to return. It's Andrews once again. 23-yard return out to the 24-yard line. Stephen Roberts, the special teams tackle. Career high already on a dozen rushes. 118 on the night for Parker. And some of these rushes have been hard-fought runs. And one of the things I like about Jordan Parker is while he's a tall guy, look at his pad level. He's always got a forward lean. He's downhill between the tackles. That time Western Kentucky commits 10 to the line of scrimmage. He breaks through. Nobody behind to keep pace with Jordan Parker. We'll continue to see he and Drayton Calhoun in the backfield for this Blue Raider offense. And now it's time for Western Kentucky behind the eight ball here to come up with some answers. Western Kentucky allows 108 rush yards a game. Middle Tennessee already 143. And now the offense, which struggled on the opening drive, back to work. The Sunbelt's leading rusher, Antonio Andrews, picks up a half dozen to the 30, and Kevin Byard on the stop. Byard, instinctive is how he's described. He's a redshirt freshman. T.T. Barber, who's been out the last couple of games, a middle linebacker, he's a freshman. Leighton Gaskew is sophomore. Bastide on the front line is a sophomore. Well, and they've got some juniors and redshirt seniors, but they weren't experienced guys. And so they're somewhat newcomers to this year's defense for Middle Tennessee State. A young defense that's given up the most yards, but again, middle of the pack in points in the Sun Belt. Quick screen thrown to the sideline. And Willie McNeil got a nice block on the edge from Marcus Vasquez. He stepped out at the 47-yard line. 16-yard pickup and a first down near midfield. Again, this is all about numbers. Middle Tennessee State loads the box, so they've got a two-on-one situation on the perimeter. Two receivers, one to block the corner, and the other, outstanding job, turning the corner, utilizing that block. Willie McNeil and Marcus Vasquez, number nine, really setting the edge and allowing the ball carrier to get to the perimeter. First, first down of the night for Western Kentucky to the 47. Andrews looking for an alley, trying to bounce to the outside. It's brought down for a loss of a three, or a loss of three. Craig Allen on the stop. There is Jawan Harley, who we mentioned earlier. Redshirt junior, a Florida State transfer. It's apparent early on that Middle Tennessee State has essentially said, Western Kentucky, you're going to have to throw the football to beat us. We are not going to allow you to gash us and allow Antonio Andrews to get his seventh 100 consecutive yard game against us. Mitchell Henry splitting out wide. Four-man pressure on Jakes. He's got an opening. 
Nice job by Andrews to turn around and block for him, get him a couple of extra yards near the 45. He'll pick up nine and set up a manageable third down. Well, it is a manageable third down, as we've talked about. 51% is the rate that Western Kentucky is converting on third down. The tops of the Sun Belt Conference, that could have been disastrous had that been a sack. Very smart, heady play by the experienced K1 Jakes at quarterback for Western Kentucky. Again, this is where Western Kentucky thrives, leading the nation in time of possession because they're able to convert one out of every two third down opportunities. Jakes to throw over the middle. It's Henry for a first down. We'll mark him down at the 36. Roderick Blunt on the stop after an 11 yard pickup to convert. This is a high low read using an H back and a tight end. You're gonna have about a 10 to 12 yard in cut option route to the top of your screen. And then the underneath route, same route, you've got two levels. Quarterback's gonna read linebacker level and make the easy pitch and catch. Kwan Jakes has done a great job developing his progressions. Willie Taggart has stated that's the best improvement he's made from last year to this year. First and 10 at the 36. Play fake to Andrews who throws a block. Gives time to Jakes, taking a shot for Aikens. And he got it for a touchdown. <laughs> Second touchdown of the season for the freshman from Tampa. And Kenneth Gilstrap got beat on the coverage. Garrett Schwetman on for the extra point with a hold of Brakefield. Hilltoppers right back in at opening quarter. Kenneth Gilstrap, number 18. He's covering the post route off a play action pass. K1 Jakes takes a chance. You see Austin Aikens, 85. He's just going to run right with him. But Gilstrap's got pretty good coverage. Gets his hand over the top. And that right there, folks, is why football is a game of inches. Because that was about what separated that finger of Gilstrap's from the 10 fingers of Austin Aikens. And Aikens, 5'11. Gilstrap, 5'9. Western Kentucky, which has won 13 of its last 16 games, 10 of its last 11 Sun Belt games. They're receiving votes in the top 25 this year. Willie Taggart's team has challenged itself between playing Alabama, between playing LSU last year, both when they were number one. This has been a incredible turnaround the last 13 months. Well, played the University of Alabama very, very well. The, uh, earlier in the year, obviously, the road win versus Kentucky out of the SEC. Right. But right now, Middle Tennessee State giving Western Kentucky a dose of their own medicine. Look at how fast this first quarter has flown by. And it's because Middle Tennessee State on offense has been outstanding running the football. Each team so far tonight averaging eight yards per play. Two efficient offensive teams going at it tonight. Jesse Roy. Sophomore from Charlotte kicks it away. And Watley actually takes it from the five. May have gone out of bounds. Watley takes it down the sideline for an excellent return out across the 40-yard line. And Jesse Roy had to get him down after a 39-yard return. Three-point game in the first. This has been a very close series. Two years ago, it was a one-point win for Middle Tennessee. Last season, it went to overtime. Middle Tennessee getting the second score in the first overtime. Second overtime, they had an opportunity to take a 33-30 lead. And then that's when the Sun Belt's top rusher last year, Bobby Rainey, got the pass from Kiwan Jakes to win it in two OTs on a Thursday on ESPNU last year. And since then, Western Kentucky has had a turnaround. They're 13-3, including winning that game last season. Ramel Lewis makes the stop on Jordan Parker. They go right back to Parker, five more yards. Well, another thing to note, Middle Tennessee State has not scored a defensive touchdown since last year's game versus Western, Western Kentucky. Right?
Parker has been the featured offensive player for the Blue Raiders. He motions out. Bryson into the backfield. They get the carry. And it'll be just shy of the first down. Ramel Lewis and Andrew Jackson both getting to him for the stop. There are some impressive young bats for Middle Tennessee State, as we've noted tonight. Jordan Parker off to a fast start. Just a true freshman. Jeremiah Bryson, a redshirt freshman out of Smyrna, Tennessee. And the redshirt junior, Drayton Calhoun, the transfer from LSU. Very exciting threesome of backs for the Blue Raiders. Hilltoppers load the box here, and they'll run it with Griswood getting the first down near the 40. Mark him down just shy of it. He'll pick up six. That's Kyle Griswood, transfer from Duke, a Wildcat quarterback. He's bounced around a different couple of positions, so he's used to running the football at times. I'm very impressed with Middle Tennessee State's fortitude when it comes to running the football because they're having to run against a lot of stacked fronts, and they're winning at the line of scrimmage. 158 yards on the ground already in this game for Middle Tennessee. On a play fake, there's Griswold at the 30. Twisted down by Jonathan Dowling for a first down, a dozen yard pickup. Leaping grab by Griswold, second on the team with 30 catches this year. Griswold just gets right past linebacker level to the right side of your screen, pops his head around. Logan Kilgore does a, throws a strike right into the hole and that's what you're gonna get with this run game. It's gonna be play pass off of it. On first down, uh, give to Jordan Parker. Make it Calhoun once again. That's the LSU transfer. Close to the 25-yard line. Gavin Rocker on the stop. Kilgore, two for three passing early in this game. 67% completion rate right on cue. Very similar to K1 Jakes, two exceptionally efficient quarterbacks going at it tonight. Here is Calhoun with an alley and a cut and a first down inside the 10-yard line. First and goal coming up for Middle Tennessee, threatening once again. We'll see if that takes us to the close of the first 15. Well, Adam, I mean, if it does, Western Kentucky is going to be looking forward to it because you could have driven a Volkswagen through a multitude of holes that were set up, most notably by Rice that right is guard the Jadarius end Hamlin. Of the first quarter, time out. 178 rush yards for Middle Tennessee. Parker and Calhoun cashing this Western Kentucky offense. They got it right back with Akins. They're down by three through one. Welcome you back to College Football Primetime on ESPNU in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Second place in the Sun Belt is on the line. Two three and one teams going at it this evening. A rivalry that dates back 98 years. Two teams separated by about 100 miles. And Middle Tennessee State already three yards shy of their rushing average per game. 178 yards on the ground against the top defense in the Sun Belt. Well, and it is very, very clear that Middle Tennessee State came into this football game, they saw something and put faith in that offensive line. So guys, we can Take win more, at the point of attack. We can win in the run game. And it doesn't matter how many guys to this point that Western Kentucky lines up near the line of scrimmage or within the box, because Middle Tennessee State having their way in the first quarter. First and goal from the nine. And Kilgore, the second most efficient passer in the conference, back to work. Given to Parker. Two freshmen, already a career high in rush yards in one quarter. Stopped by Darius Washington after a short pickup second and goal for the Blue Raiders. Middle Tennessee had the pace in the opening 15 minutes. Flag is thrown. This will not count for Amos. They're going to call it a touchdown, but there was movement before the play. There might have been a Western Kentucky man in the neutral zone, and Amos went up high for it. If this goes against Western, that's a free play and a touchdown. Well, that was the smarts of Logan Kilgore, Ramel Lewis, number 96. He jumps into the neutral zone in the center for Middle Tennessee sna State, snaps the football. Offsides, number 93. Touchdown, the penalty is declined. 
That's a touchdown. It was Quantera Smith, the nation's leader in sacks in the neutral zone. What a heady play by Micah James, the center for Middle Tennessee State. He does a fantastic job. On the perimeter there, Anthony Amos, the go-to target in the passing game. Ruling on the field is a touchdown. The previous play is under further review. I think they're checking to see if Amos was in bounds or not. It did look like on our replay that Amos's foot, his toe was on the chalk on that sideline, on the near side of the goal line. What I loved about this play, and we're going to take a look about whether or not Anthony Amos had one foot in bounds. The ball's secured. Wow. Now that right there is not indisputable. Right. And that has to be indisputable video evidence to overturn the call on the field. I think this call will stand. That's good focus. From that point of view, he has secured the football. And that should be a touchdown. Touchdown. But let's go back now to Logan Kilgore, the quarterback, and the center, Micah James, to have the wherewithal to quickly realize we've got a free one here. Let me get the ball to my best target. That man right there, number six, Anthony Amos. To take another look from another angle, and that angle's not near as conclusive as the other angle we showed you. You let that run, go back and let that run and make sure he's not bobbling the football from this angle. We've got a pretty quick call here. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. They confirmed it, saying that the foot was in bounds. Riley Johnson, our lead official tonight, making the call for a touchdown, and all of a sudden, it's a two-score lead for Middle Tennessee. That's a heady play by Middle Tennessee State on offense, and a, a ball that was thrown by Logan Kilgore to the only place it could have been thrown where Anthony Amos, number six, the intended target, has a shot, or you play the next down. Excellent execution. Lopez on for the extra points. Middle Tennessee has put up 17 points in just over a quarter on the Sun Belt's top defense. And how about Anthony Amos, the top receiver in the Sun Belt, seventh touchdown of the season. Middle Tennessee's got a 10 point lead. This is a guy who Rick Stock still says may be playing on Sundays. Redshirt senior from Fayetteville, North Carolina. This is a guy when they beat Georgia Tech earlier this season and handily, mind you, by three touchdowns, made one of the better catches you're going to see. This was a top ten play on SportsCenter. Yeah, look at him in the back of the end zone, working the back end line, and then just suction cups it. Pluck. That's what you call the pluck and tuck right there. Anthony Amos, and that was a big win for Middle Tennessee State, of course, on the road versus Georgia Tech out of the ACC. Buster Faulkner is the offensive coordinator for Middle Tennessee. He says he and Kyle Griswood might be two of the smartest players he's ever coached. That was a really heads up play he just made now for the touchdown. Well, and look at all the plays that have been made by the skilled players for Middle Tennessee State. Keep in mind, this is a team that lost to Barris Jefferson in the preseason. He led them in receptions a year ago. Marcus Henry as well. Henry injured earlier this season against FIU. Three possessions for Middle Tennessee, three scores. They were two yards shy of having three touchdowns. From the two-yard line, it's Andrews. Good blocking in front of him, and he breaks a tackle. Steps out at the 28. Return to 26. Decent field position for the Hilltoppers. Full day of college football a couple of days from now. First at noon on Saturday, Commodores and Wildcats. Great SEC East rivalry. Then at 3.30, Boilermakers hosting a Nittany Lion team playing really well in the Big Ten, top of the leaders division. Then at seven, it's UConn and South Florida, both looking for their first Big East win. ESPN News College Football triple header available on Watch ESPN as well. Vanderbilt looking to be bowl eligible two years in a row at 500 or better. Has not happened since the early 70s. James Franklin has that team right on the brink. There's Andrews. Rusher in the Sun Belt across the 30, down to the 34 with five yards on the pickup on first down. Jimmy Staten on the stop. When you look at Western Kentucky on offense, they are simple, made to look complex by personnel movements, shifts, and motion. So while they don't have a lot of plays, 
they look like they do because of how many different looks they're giving you. It's a lot for defensive teams to prepare for. You know you're going to get a heavy dose of the run game, but you also know you're going to get a lot of personnel groupings. Andrews on the ground once again. Good effort in the backfield by Craig Allen sneaking in to make the stop. Team leader in tackles out of Georgia, the Sam linebacker for Middle Tennessee to force a third down situation for Western Kentucky. Now, we asked Willie Taggart, why are you guys so good on third down? He said, we stay on schedule on first and second down. Middle Tennessee trying to make sure they disrupt that for Western. Avoiding third and seven plus, that's the key for this offense. It's got to be manageable and fit what they are on offense in the passing game. Mitchell Henry motions out wide. Jake's in that direction, throws short underneath. And Jack Doyle diving for a first down. It looks like he's going to be marked just shy. Craig Allen made the stop. Doyle, one of the best pass catching tight ends in the country, is going to be about a yard short. Well, this is just what you call an option route, where the tight end's going to come off and he's going to have the option of sitting in the hole, breaking to the outside, maybe breaking to the inside. The problem is they didn't get the yard to gain. That route should have been ran with much deeper intentions to ensure you have an opportunity. And it looks now like Western Kentucky is going to go for it here on fourth. They need a yard. They're 4 of 12 this season. This is dangerous field position to do this. But Andrews will pick up the first down across the 40-yard line. Picks up four yards to move the sticks. Again, you give up that ball, you're giving a short field to an offense that looks very good right now. Right now, head coach Willie Taggart is basically sending a message to his offensive line. I'm going to put faith on you backed up on fourth down when we're down 17 to 7 to move the pile and keep this drive alive. Again, time of possession is a huge component to their pace, their style on offense. They've got to maintain possession. And keep, right now, they got to keep their defense off the field because Middle Tennessee State having their way. First and 10 at the 42. On the ground to Kashawn Simpson. Pick up three yards. Simpson, little used, six foot junior out of Lenton, Kentucky. Trying to spell Andrews, who's actually been stymied for the most part early in this game. Just 18 yards on six carries for Antonio Andrews, the top rusher in the Sun Belt. Western Kentucky here is going to line up and continue to probably have some one on one matchups on the perimeter as Middle Tennessee State is going to load the box to stop that run. Andrews back in the game. He's the check down. Instead, it's Doyle for a first down. And he loses his helmet, dragging a defender to the 40-yard line. Doyle will have to step off the field for a play. But that is Jack Doyle. They call him Jack Bauer. That's the nickname for Jack Doyle. This is the same play they went to on the previous series. The underneath crossing route to 82 Doyle with the option route behind it, a simple high-low read. You see some helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact, obviously not leading with intention on behalf of Middle Tennessee State, but now Doyle's got to sit out of play because of the helmet coming off. 37 receptions coming in. That's third in the NCAA among tight ends. He's already got a couple of catches tonight. Back to Simpson. We'll pick up two to the 38-yard line. Bring up second down. There is Christian Henry who got dragged by Jack Doyle on the prior play, makes the tackle. Well, Middle Tennessee State showing some rotational depth right now. Just brought in an entirely new set of front four players within their defensive front seven. Some fresh legs coming into the play for the Blue Raiders. Staten up front, Patrick McNeil as well. He's a backup. The Raiders feigning the blitz. They bring seven on the run. And Andrews is held for a short gain of just two yards. And that'll set up a third down situation for Western Kentucky, about a half dozen. T.T. Barber on the stop. The true freshman from Georgia. Missed the last couple of games with a stinger in his neck. But if there's a star on this young defense, he's a star. He is the star. And the coaching staff in Middle Tennessee State felt like they, they've really missed his presence. But from a tackling standpoint, from a leadership standpoint, it means an awful lot to the overall productivity of this defense. That's big talking about a young player like that who continues to get better every single week. 
Third and six for Western Kentucky. Play clock running down. They get it off on time. Andrews with Doyle blocking for him in the backfield. Dove across the 30-yard line. And it'll depend on the spot, but he may have enough for the first down. It's going to be very, very close. They're going to give him the first down. Yeah, the tight end Doyle in the backfield that time, lead blocking. Here's Doyle. Which, again, the Western Kentucky team that leads the nation in time of possession. Chew up the clock. If they get it into a situation where they have a lead, they're tough to beat. Andrews getting the carry across the 25-yard line. Let's go to Matt Schick. He's got an update on Virginia Tech Miami. Hey, guys. Third quarter, Virginia Tech puts up 107 yards to Miami's three yards in the third quarter. But Logan Thomas on the doorstep fumbles the snap, a turnover. He also had a red zone pick in the first half. Miami leads 20 to 12 as they enter the fourth quarter, guys. Matt, thanks very much. I know it sounds like such a broken record, but turnover margin and red zone production, so critical to the success of the game of football, truly flex winning and losing. Second and four, Nick Bosch, the fullback, motions out. Jake's to throw, pressure off the edge. He evades it, locks it. Andrews, touchdown! Christian Henry lost Antonio Andrews, who grabs it for the score. Now, I want you to pay close attention to K1 Jakes. Look at his hands in the pocket. He brings that ball, keeps both hands on it, chest level, brings it tight to avoid the swiping hand of the Middle Tennessee State defender to make the throw. Schwetman for the extra point. He caps off. In 11 play, 72 yard, six and a half minute drive. Hilltoppers back within three. K1 Jakes throws a strike to Antonio Andrews, and Western Kentucky just keeps on answering. It's going to be a good one here in Bowling Green. ESPNU College Football Primetime brought to you by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. And it's brought to you by Golden Corral. Help yourself to happiness. Western Kentucky looked a little sluggish on its first drive, but K1 Jake's now tied for second all time in Western Kentucky history in touchdown passes as he throws his 46th in his Hilltopper career. He finds Antonio Andrews for his second of the season through the air. Now also a single season mark, second most in school history as well. Antonio Andrews, a feature back this season. Boy, he's, he had to live up to some big names in Willie Taggart's career. Had Toby Gerhardt at Stanford, Bobby Rainey, Sunbelt Player of the Year last year offensively. And Andrews has fit right into this solid offense for the Hilltoppers, which is back within three. Jesse Roy kicks it away. Reggie Watley bobbles at the six. And works out to about the 21 yard line. There is a flag thrown all the way back where the ball was kicked. We'll re kick this. Riley Johnson, who officiated last year's military bowl our lead official tonight. And Toledo knocked off Air Force in a one-point game. The fact that you know that is impressive. Offsides, number 17. Five-yard penalty, re-kick. Well, Randall called for it. Willie Taggart's team, the fourth most penalized team in the Sun Belt. It's been relatively clean, though, in the early going. And a chance for Reggie Watley and better field position for Middle Tennessee. Oh, 
Mentioned two great return men in this game. Andrews, the Sun Belt leader in kick and punt return yardage, while Watley is right behind him, averaging 30 per kick return. Does not have a touchdown on a kick return, though, this year. Does have an 85-yard return. That's his best. From the nine, Watley. Got a good block to spring him to the sideline and makes another man miss. Another flag is thrown on the near sideline. Watley inside the 45. It's twisted out of bounds. It's a 50-yard return for Watley, but what's the penalty marker going to be this time? And this one's going to negate a 50-yard return. Well, the Middle Tennessee State coaches and head coach Rick Stockstill, they knew it. The moment they saw it, Near the return, holding by the return team. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Rick Stockstill's team will go to work offensively. Let's go back to the Western Kentucky cap with that touchdown to Antonio Andrews. Well, you take a look. This is textbook ball handling within the pocket. It's a play-action pass to Andrews. But right here, watch K1 Jakes. He senses the rush. He doesn't look at the rush. So Dierko is coming off the edge, 89 right there to swipe at him. And most importantly, he avoids Dierko Nolan and is able to throw the football accurately, keeping his eyes downfield. They spot the ball at the 25-yard line. Jordan Parker back to the ground. Ramel Lewis on the stop after a two-yard gain. Past the halfway point of quarter number two. Two teams that are coming in at 3-1 and one in the Sun Belt. Both have impressive victories this season in non-conference play. And very tough schedules on both sides. Second place on the line tonight in conference play. Empty set for Kilgore. Four on the line for the Hilltoppers. Nobody in the middle of the field, Adam. Five in the pattern against seven in coverage. Kilgore rolling right. Trying to get to the edge. He'll get rid of it. Throw low for Amos. Covered by Dowling, no flag on the play. It's an incomplete pass, and now third and long for Middle Tennessee. Well, that time, Logan Kilgore, he had number nine, Kyle Griswood, coming on an inside cut, but he couldn't see him. His view is obstructed. Western Kentucky doing a good job forcing Logan Kilgore out of the pocket so he could see the field and getting him out of his comfort zone. Four of five on third down against the top defense in the Sun Belt already. Kildor on third and eight for Amos through his hands. Arius Wright, the junior from Georgia, had the coverage to force fourth down. The punt unit for the first time is coming out on the field for Middle Tennessee. It'll be their first punt. With Josh Davis, who's been nursing a nagging hamstring injury, actually only had one punt last week before he had to leave the ball game. Gets rid of that one with Antonio Andrews, top punt returner in the Sun Belt, stepping up to the 42. And a short field for Western Kentucky coming up for Western Kentucky. After Kilgore and Amos just could not connect for a first down, Western Kentucky short field coming up. Yeah, short field coming up. Big defensive stand for Western Kentucky. Can the Hilltoppers answer? That could have been a missed opportunity by Amos. K1 Jakes and the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers with their best starting field position coming up. Jake's already with a couple of touchdown passes in this first half. But very efficient. Outside of the deep post route there to Austin Akins, number 85 for the first touchdown. Really just doing a nice job taking what the defense gives him. Takes a shot down field. Akins, number 85, makes a wonderful play. But again, the presence in the pocket protects the football with both hands. Finds Andrews down the seam after the play action pass. It's so difficult for quarterbacks to be able to feel the rush, not look at the rush. And he keeps his eyes downfield so he can make the necessary throw late. 
First and ten from the middle Tennessee 47. The delayed give to Andrews with a hole. Twisted down inside the 40-yard line by Chris Sharp, the cornerback, close to the first down marker. That's a big one, the best one so far we've seen from Andrews. Well, he just keeps grinding away. This is the lead draw. And then it's about, it's about tackling. Well, what have we seen from college and football? How difficult tackling is in the open field. That time, where Derek Blunt, number 33, one of our impact players coming in, so responsible for that inside run game. They do mark it as a first down. Willie Taggart, who is a great rushing quarterback in his days, loves the ground game. He's a running backs coach at Stanford before he came back to his alma mater. First and ten. Jake's over the middle for a first down. There's Jack Doyle again. 14-yard pickup. Doyle and the rest of these receivers, as you said, very efficient along with K1 Jakes. They get a lot out of their catches. These tight ends do a tremendous job of navigating soft spots and zone coverage. That's just an option right, right there. So Doyle just goes up, finds the hole, settles, makes himself big for the quarterback. I'll tell you, if you're a tight end, you want to play in a Willie Taggart coached offense. This is a tight end's dream. He splits out just off the edge of the line. First and 10 from the 24. Out of the backfield, he's got Kadeem Jones for his first touch of the night. And he's close to the first down marker, dragged down at the 15. To see where the forward progress puts him may be enough for the first down. Kadeem Jones, junior out of Florida. Willie Taggart says the fullback is the heart of the offense. That's what this kid is, Kadeem Jones. You see the ball fake and then you come out and you're, you're exposed you've got to make that throw number 85 omar mcclendon in the face that time with k1 jakes and the jumbo athletes guys like fullbacks h-backs tight ends for western kentucky all have tremendous ball skills to contribute in the passing game and they do give him the first down to the 13. hilltopper is looking for the lead jakes tips Intended for Jack Doyle, but Justin Jones with a touchdown saving tip, and it brings up second and ten. Was it ever? That's just good defense, good awareness, and key in the quarterback's eyes. And this time, this time he just can't quite get it over the linebacker level. And you are correct, Adam. That would have been an easy touchdown for Western Kentucky. This is actually the first trip in the red zone for Western Kentucky. Exceptionally efficient is Willie Taggart's team. Third in the Sun Belt, and they do capitalize a lot. 25 of 35 drives, ending in six. This is Andrews on second and 10. Pick up a few yards near the 10-yard line. And we'll bring up third and seven. They need the three, don't necessarily need the end zone here. Willie Taggart has taken this program to new heights. And this is a team and a program now playing like they expect to win, not wondering if they can. 13 and three in their last 16. Let's go, K1! Go, K1! Let's go, K1! On cue for third down so far tonight. Third and seven from the 10. Jakes to the end zone. Hilltoppers unable to take the lead. McNeil could not haul it in. And it'll bring up fourth and seven. A catchable ball, and Middle Tennessee escapes. That would have made the weekend top ten on SportsCenter, that's for sure. Look at him elevate to try and come up and make this grab. And it's really the ground that lodges the football away from Willie McNeil, number 10, is Chris Sharp, number 27, on the defense. So Garrett Schwetman for a 29-yard field goal. This would be a career long. Not pretty looking, a line drive, but a tie game at 17. But it could have been a Hilltopper lead. Willie McNeil on the back end of this K1 Jakes pass going up, coming down. Can't haul it in. It's 17 all in the second. Matt Chick with an update from Miami. Duke Johnson 
runs this one in from six yards out. And with around seven minutes to go, Miami extends their lead to 27 to 12 on Virginia Tech in the fourth. Guys. Matt, thank you. We'll have an update coming up at halftime inside of four minutes till we hit there. 17 all with second place in the Sun Belt down the line tonight. Both teams have had a drive that could have ended in a touchdown. Middle Tennessee on its opening drive. Western Kentucky a moment ago, both times having to settle for the field goal. They're clamping down on defense in the red area. Again, red zone production is such a vital factor to success. Let's see if Middle Tennessee State gets back to running the football. Kind of deviated from the plan on that last drive with their first punt. Jesse Roy the kick. And it'll be Watley on the six. A 25 yard return out past the 30 yard line. Decent field position for the Blue Raiders. A couple of conference champions will be crowned this Sunday on ESPNU Women's Soccer Championships. First at one, it's the ACC, followed by the SEC at 3.30 Eastern Time. Coming up on Sunday on ESPNU. First three drives, three scores for Middle Tennessee. They went three and out on their last drive, and as Luke's mentioned, they kind of got away from running the football. They had 158 yards in the first quarter on the ground. And most of those belonging to Jordan Parker, the true freshman. 130 yards from Middle Tennessee State's true freshman, a career high already tonight. Remember, Western leads the uh, uh, leads the country in yep. time of possession. Middle Tennessee flipping the script. We're flipping the script, and, and that's a result of Western Kentucky being able to extend drives here so far in the second quarter, unable to do so in the first. Give this to Reggie Watley. Needed to get to the 40 for the first down. He's very close to the marker. They'll spot him at the 39. The safety Dowling, the Florida transfer on the stop. So we hit the three minute mark and third down and one coming up. Reggie Watley is quite the water bug. Very difficult to handle in space. Low center of gravity, very shifty. One of the reasons why he's such a good uh, kickoff return man. Big third down here. Blue Raiders trying to avoid back to back three and outs. Give the ball back to Western Kentucky with a couple of timeouts. Go back to Parker across the 40-yard line for the first down. That was the fourth time they've had a third and one situation. They've converted all four doing their job on first and second down with that guy. Well, in that time, number 93, Quantaria Smith for Western Kentucky, who leads the country in sacks with 11 and a half. He breaks through but overruns the play, and Parker able to lunge forward for the first down. First and 10 from the 41. This is Watley again. Off right tackle, maybe a yard. You know, you mentioned Quantara Smith, senior from Georgia, one of the stars on this Western Kentucky defense, the top defense in the Sun Belt. Coming off a game where he had five sacks against FIU, one sack shy of tying the Sun Belt record. He's been stymied tonight so far against this very good offensive line. Kilgore to throw. Buying some time, throwing for Amos for a first down at the 41. 17-yard pickup on the scramble and catch. Boy, Amos, sure-handed as it gets, huh? <laughs> Absolutely. One of the best hands in the Sun Belt, conference's top receiver. Middle Tennessee picking up the pace. Parker with an alley off the left side. Minute 35 remaining with still three timeouts to work with. Remember, Western will get the football to start the second half, so this is a good drive for middle right now. So effective on first down, running the football. Really gives you options as a coach and staff on second down, run or pass. That first down efficiency has been fantastic for the Blue Raiders. Five on the line for Western Kentucky. This is Bryson. Couldn't squeeze through the first level. He gets across the 35. Mark him at the 33 for four yards. Darius Washington on the stop. You know, what's been so impressive offensively from both of these ball clubs here tonight is we do have an injured player down on the, on the field for Western Kentucky, and it is Quantara Smith, who just spoke of, leading the country with 11 and a half sacks. He is down. Try and get a look at what may have happened on that play. But what's been impressive about both of these teams, 
is very few penalties offensively and defensively, a, a clean game. Especially considering the pace. Smith is down. Third and two coming up. We'll check on him on, on the other side with a minute left. I'm Matt Chick. Coming up at halftime, we'll have highlights of Virginia Tech and Miami in that key Coastal Division ACC matchup. The tide rolls into Death Valley. We'll have a preview of LSU and Alabama. And it's Pac-12 basketball media day. We'll hear from a pair of coaches and some exhibition hoops highlights, including defending national champ Kentucky. Guys? Matt, looking forward to it. Going to look at Quantara Smith. Maybe just got the wind knocked out of him and will step off for a play. But the nation's leader in sacks, fourth in tackles for loss, one sack shy of tying the Sun Belt record, owned by Brandon Lang, who played at Troy State. Well, the tackles for loss, certainly impressive, but that's one thing that both of these teams have been able to avoid tonight, and that's negative plays. We yep. have not seen a lot of third and longs, have not seen negative plays. And another third and short for Middle Tennessee. The clock moving at 45. We go to Griswold leaping to try to get the first down. And based on the spot for the line judge, it's short. We'll have to check it further, but right now it looks short of the first down. Middle Tennessee State calls for a timeout because they knew they were short. Timeout. Middle Tennessee. That is their first charge of the first half. This will be a 30-second timeout. 30-second timeout, fourth down. Closing in on a half minute to go in the opening half. Western will get the ball to start the second half, so potential for Middle Tennessee to take a halftime lead. Both of these teams come in at 3-1. and one. Both have been beaten by Louisiana Monroe, which will play Louisiana Lafayette this weekend. So the inside track to the number two seed, essentially, in the Sun Belt. There's only two contracted bowl games right. in the Sun Belt. You may have some slots open up, but there's only two contracts for the Sun Belt to get a bowl game. Western's already eligible. Middle Tennessee becomes eligible tonight with a win. But becoming eligible may not be enough. Exactly. I think there could be at least three or four teams that might have to have at least seven, if not eight wins sure. to be considered. Again, you may be eligible. Doesn't guarantee anything. A year ago, Western Kentucky, this team right here, seven and five did not go bowling. Trying to keep the drive alive to potentially go up at the half. Middle Tennessee on fourth and one. Parker got hit in the backfield. Did he lean forward enough? Kenny Martin made the initial hit, and he is marked short of the first down. The senior out of Orlando made the initial hit on the true freshman. And Western Kentucky stops the best fourth down team in the Sun Belt. Difficult to run against this front when all 11 players are within the tackle box. You're just overloaded with numbers. Jonathan Dowling and that crew, as we talked about defensively, difference maker at all three levels. This time, number 95, Kenny Martin, the initial penetrator out of that defensive front. And now we'll see if Western Kentucky takes a shot with a couple of timeouts and 32 seconds or if they're content to take a knee or run the football they'll try to get some yardage and this will set up an interesting decision here 25 seconds left clock stops to move the chains and Willie Taggart will use a timeout timeout WKU second charged of this half this will be a 30 second timeout 30 second timeout Little, little surprised that they didn't have two plays called right here. Sure. In case you had a first down where the clock's going to stop to mark the chains, and then you run and you gain an extra play by having two plays in your pocket. If you don't get the first down, you know right off the bat you're going to call your timeout. Little interesting tactic on the side. I'm surprised Coach Willie Taggart didn't have another one in his holster there. Rest of the schedule for Western Kentucky as we close in on the end of this first half. Counting this game, three of the final four games for Western are at home. And they played a pretty tough schedule early. Did have to go to Tuscaloosa to play Alabama. Remember, they beat Kentucky in Lexington. Played at Arkansas State. Gus Malzahn's crew, which is playing well this year. At Troy. They were just at Florida International. So some home games to close out the year for Western. Potentially, if they can finish off undefeated, they'll be 10-2 this season. 
First and ten, they go back to Antonio Andrews. Makes that man miss to open up some space. Why didn't he go out of bounds there? To the 42-yard line, the clock is going to reset to move the chains, but he should have stepped out of bounds there. Absolutely, he should have just walked out of bounds immediately. Now they're going to have to either clock it here, which you see Coach Taggart calling for, because they didn't have another player in their holster. So it'll be second down. That could be a big down. 14 seconds plus a timeout is a lot of time with a short field to try and go. That would have been big if he stepped out of bounds there. Well, he knew it, too. Antonio Andrews, number five, watching his body language once this clocked play following this mental blunder on behalf of Andrews could have just stepped out of bounds, stopped the clock. And to Andrews' credit, he's picked up big chunks of yardage to move the football quickly for Western. Now still a couple of shots and still a timeout left for Jakes. Five-man pressure, all blocked. And out of bounds at the 28-yard line. Willie McNeil, heads up play, mark him officially at the 29 for 13 yards, still nine seconds, still a timeout. You have to take a shot at the end zone here. Kicking game's not all that great. Your kicking game is not all that great. That's exactly what I was going to say. The longest field goal in the year, just 29 yards for Schwetman. Garrett Schwetman, number 56, not a lot of confidence in the kicking game. Expect Western Kentucky to take some shots here. From here, it'd be a 46-yarder. Jakes to throw, good protection, has to flush and throw on the run. And it is nearly intercepted, Brown the intended target. Gilstrap nearly picked it off. Still a second left. Do you take a shot here, why not? Well, you have to. You're sure. way out of field goal range right now for Schwetman. And listen, why not take a shot? You've got these big, tall, tight ends. And look at this, look what they're gonna come up with. Schwetman is coming out. His longest field goal coming into tonight was 27 yards. That was his longest make. Very surprising. Very, made, very surprising. Made a 29-yarder earlier. The longest attempt was 36. This from 47 yards, 46 yards. Right-footed kick is going to be just short of the crossbar, and that'll take us to halftime. They put a little confidence into the freshman from Murray, That's Kentucky. That's the end of the first half. Don't forget, Western Kentucky will get the ball to start the second half. Second place up for grabs in the Sun Belt, and we have a good one tonight. We're tied at 17 at the half. We welcome you in to halftime. I am Matt Trick along with Charles Arbuckle. Western Kentucky, Middle Tennessee State, not the only game going on tonight. Down in Miami, Virginia Tech and Miami. <laughs> Oh, yes. Key ACC battle in the Coastal. The Hurricanes have lost three straight. Looking to turn things around. Gabriel Terry gets his hand on this uh, ball. Blocks the Beaver puck. ball. What's going on? You got to block. You got to protect. You can't get punch blocked. That, it's just been an unbeamer-like type of year. Two plays later, Stephen Morris feeling good. Alan Hearns feeling better. We talked about it before the game. Throwing the football is where you have to attack Virginia Tech. Miami did that early. Miami up 7-3 in the second. Duke Johnson fielding the kickoff. Oh, boy. More plays for Duke would probably mean more big plays for Miami. They don't get them the ball enough. Jed Fisk, get this young man more touches, offensive coordinator. Down inside the 20, and then Stephen Morris dumping it to Mike James, and wow, no one home. That'll be easy. Miami up 14 to 3. Vatek answers Logan Thomas. Anyone home here? Who says he can't run? He sees the middle of the field open. Good read by Logan Thomas getting to the house. One of his better plays tonight. 73 yards for the score. They missed the extra point down 14 to 9, and then Logan Thomas fumbles the ball and the snap They've on the doorstep. It. You cannot get in the red zone and not come away with something. So it's 20 to 12, and then Miami. They don't fumble it in the red zone here. Duke Johnson, 100-yard game tonight in his three games in October, rushed for a total of 96 yards, no touchdowns. Went the whole month of October with no touchdowns. Gets November off on the right foot with the TD. Miami up 30 to 12, and just been one of those years for Virginia Tech. It really has. They haven't played well offensively or defensively at times, and Miami is a team that we, we don't know from week to week what you're going to see. But when Duke Johnson gets the football, good things usually happen. About to snap their three-game losing streak. 
How about in the Mac? Return of the Mac. We heard this, uh, you saw this right before the game you're watching now. Right here on the U. Frank Solich and the 7 and 1 Bobcats kicking on Eastern Michigan and Tyler Tettleton. Has Chase Cochran for the touchdown. Good play design, moving one way, then come back open. Cochran wide open on the other side of the And then the Tettleton again to Dante Foster right before the end of the first half. Good yards after catch, catch the football, turn it up and score. It's an Ohio team that got bounced out of the BCS standings. They were in the standings for the first time in school history, lost last week to Miami of Ohio, trying to turn it around this week. And Dasmond Patterson. I like how he hit the hole there and the little spin move. Thought he was playing a little hoop action right there. 29 yards for the score. Ohio wins 45 to 14. Death Valley will be the place on Saturday night as the tide comes rolling in. What's it going to take for LSU to pull off the upset? In the first half, you saw it. Jordan Parker, 58 yards for the touchdown. We are knotted up at half. Look at him! Oh, yeah, Give me that tiger head! Good. Oh, wrong head! Sorry, folks! <laughs> oh. Roll tide! No, it's not a battle of the unbeatens like it was last year in the regular season or for a national championship, but this game just as important. Top five battle in the BCS standings in the SEC West. Winner controls their destiny as they head to Atlanta. Three losses combined in the last two seasons between Bama and LSU. Two of them have come against one another. When you look at this tail of the tape, Alabama doing it on both sides of the ball, but defensively number one in many statistical categories, all the important ones. LSU, maybe those offensive numbers a little embellished with their non-conference offensive marks. Uh, <laughs> Especially they, passing the they, Yeah, they need to do it with defense and with running the ball. But on, on Alabama's side, they're so unflappable. They don't make mistakes. Neither does A.J. McCarron. That's going to be a tough guy to crack this Saturday. Well, you got to be a good salesman if you play quarterback. And the reason I say that is because <laughs> of his ability. When they run the football at 5.1 yards per carry, it makes it much easier for him to set this up. Now, he used to rush this last year, and he's gotten better. Going to Peyton Manning's passing school and really understanding the fine-tuned points of play-action passing. And what it does is it allows you to get that defense sucked in. Eric Reed and Craig Lowston play back deep, and they do a very good job. Remember last year, Michael Williams had that opportunity to go up and get a, uh, a, a reception. Mm -hmm. Eric Reed took it away from him. What I like about... A.J. McCarron is the run game gives him that. The offensive line fires off. And when they do that, that allows him to take his time and find those open areas. Amari Cooper, um, you know, all those guys down the Kenny field. Kenny Bell. Kenny Bell. Even the, the backs. He's throwing very well to the backs off a play-action pass. And I think that's going to be the key against LSU. Just making smart decisions. 18 touchdowns, no interceptions so far. Completing 69% of his passes. Another big game that has national championship implications. USC taking on Oregon. USC, of course, last week lost to Arizona, all but ending there. National championship hopes, the slim ones that they had, while Oregon continues to pile up the points and the push-ups from Puddles. They've scored 42 or more points in all eight games. They've won them all by at least 17 points. A lot of these games have been over at half, but They really have, and I think the one thing you look at with USC is their firepower on the outside, getting it to Woods and Lee. Oregon has to run the football effectively. That's what they do very well. Expect a high scoring one. The last three meetings between these two teams have resulted in a combined 75 points per game. Coming up, you'll see Penn State on ESPNU this weekend as they take on Purdue. The job Bill O'Brien has done, despite losing last week to Ohio State, really turning it around this year. This weekend on ESPNU on Saturday, here it is, Vanderbilt and Kentucky in the SEC. Penn State and Purdue 
Bill O'Brien and company trying to rebound from that loss to Ohio State. And then UConn taking on South Florida all Saturday on ESPNU. Speaking of Vandy and Kentucky, boy, Kentucky still looking for that first SEC win of the season. They lost last week to Missouri, giving Missouri their first SEC win. And, and Vanderbilt, things have been better in Vanderbilt. Yeah, they have. James Franklin is really trying to get them to have a commitment to winning and really understanding how to do it each and every week. This is an opportunity for them to play a team that's reeling in Joker Phillips yeah, ball club. Vanderbilt had higher expectations than the, what they've achieved. Joker Phillips' career at Kentucky started well enough, a winning record through his first 15 games. But over his last 19 games, the Wildcats are just 4-15, and 15, and the offense has just flat out disappeared. Penn State and Purdue this weekend. Purdue winless in Big Ten play. I was expected of Purdue as well. You thought that defense would show something, quarterback play. Just really haven't been able to put it together, but Penn State has. Yeah, Penn State has really been able to play some good football, much better than I think anybody ever expected. But it's just been really what they've been able to do defensively. A large part of their success, that dominating defense in the first half of games. In eight games this season, they've allowed just three touchdowns in the first half. In the second half, they've allowed 13 touchdowns. So Bill O'Brien comes in with an almost impossible situation. We wondered how would you gauge success and determine that in his first season considering they can't play for the Big Ten Championship, can't get to a bowl game. Are we seeing success so far under Bill O'Brien? I think we are. You know, really when you thought about everything that transpired, you thought moral victories would be the way they would go. But they have really played well. And you can see defensively they've struggled in the second half. But some of that could be the depth. Some of the guys that have left, some of the folks that aren't there any longer. But I tell you, one guy on defense that's played well is Michael Monty. He's done a, a great job at the linebacker position, making plays for him there, and just really helping this defense play very well. And I think Bill O'Brien has done an outstanding job of leadership under crisis. That's the hardest thing to do. But with this ball club, he's giving you a case study of what you need to do in order to be successful no matter what's going on on the outside. And I think he has shown that you can win it may not be pretty, it may be hard, but you can win if you keep your guys together. And that's a team that early on you thought with those back-to-back -back heartbreakers, they might just quit. I mean, you just don't know. Yeah. Well, they didn't, and they've come on strong. Five straight wins, they lost to Ohio State. What do you think of the remaining schedule here at Purdue? Tough one at Nebraska. Could squeeze a few more wins out of this season. Just, hey, just a couple weeks ago, they were 3-0. They played Ohio State. I think they can play with everybody on this schedule, and I don't think they have any problem with fighting through the end. Now, Nebraska's going to be tough, but Indiana, Wisconsin, you don't know which team is going to show up, but there's real good opportunities here for them. No, no doubt about it. Austin Akins, the touchdown catch. Oh, what a grab. Tied at 17 at the half. Some exhibition basketball, the defending national champs, Kentucky taking on Northwood. Archie Goodwin. This is the layup at Nerland Noel, the putback slam. Kentucky up 21 to 13. Then Archie Goodwin driving the lane. He finished with 22 points. And Nerland Noel, he's going to be, he's going to be a force. Oh man, good block shot, good hustle by the young man. And then another one for Noel. He finished with 17 points, 11 rebounds for the game. Check it out. Another drive, and nope. Not happening. He said, I'm not all about my high top fade. I can play some <laughs> basketball. Is he bringing that fade back, you think? No, but he's all brought right. it back for himself. There's Noel with the dunk. Kentucky wins 93 to 61. How about the Q's? The Q's is in the house. Taking on pace, and Jeremy Grant throws it down, setting the pace. Then Brandon Trish in a leadership role this year, misses the three. Merry Christmas, Rakeem. That's a Rakeem Christmas. That's how you finish strong and with authority. Syracuse wins 99 to 63. Well, UCLA, they got a pair of freshman studs coming in. Kyle Anderson cleared to play this week by the NCAA. Shabazz Mohammed still awaiting clearance there on the UCLA home front. Here's UCLA head coach Ben Howland at Pac-12 Media Day. First of all, really excited that Kyle's situation's behind him, and it's great for him and his family, and, and obviously the program. And you know, with, with Shabazz, we're uh, just patiently waiting and uh, being as cooperative as uh, we possibly can be with, with uh, the NC2A, and and uh, very optimistic. Well, after making the NCAA tournament 
for 25 straight years. Arizona's missed it in two of the last three years, but the media pegs them as the preseason favorite to win the Pac-12. Two starters return from that 23-win team. Here's head coach Sean Miller. I think that if at this time of year you want people to feel good about your team or our program and uh, but at this point we're still zero and zero and as we know from years gone by that there's plenty of teams that have been picked to finish high that disappoint and there there are those teams that everybody has under the radar and yet in March they're there in the promised land which a year ago was Colorado in our conference so you know for us I think it's so much about taking care of what we can and that is continue to work hard and develop and grow and that's the one thing that I've really been pleased with that we've had great leadership to this point and we have a team that's focused on getting better and I think as long as we stay in that lane so to speak uh, good things will happen for our team. So the Wildcats the preseason choice to win the Pac-12 but by the slimmest of margins your Bruins there Buck at number two. Well if they get Shabazz Muhammad <laughs> I think that's a done deal they'll move up to number one. <laughs> UCLA actually finished with more first place votes than Arizona. Antonio Andrews with the touchdown grab. Western Kentucky tied at 17. Adam Amin, Tom Luganville with the second half coming up. ESPN News College Football Primetime from Bowling Green, Kentucky. Second place in the Sun Belt on the line. Got a good one through 30 minutes, tied at 17. Back with Tom Luganville, Adam Amin. So the last two meetings between these two teams have been decided by a combined four points ever since Willie Taggart took over as the head coach of Western. So we expected a close one. Sure enough, we got a close one in the first 30 minutes. And really, it was the Middle Tennessee rushing attack against the Western Kentucky passing attack doing the work tonight. Well, don't let the spread offense look of Middle Tennessee State fool you. They came out tonight with full faith in their offensive line to pound Western Kentucky. Really impressive, especially in the first quarter with 21 rush attempts. This is Drayton Calhoun here, the LSU transfer. But it was Jordan Parker getting the bulk of the carries, the true freshman, filling in for the injured Benny Cunningham, doing most of the damage on the ground, really keeping the ball away from Western Kentucky. But Western Kentucky able to answer, most notably through the air, with Austin Aikens, number 85, hauls down that pass, and Antonio Andrews out of the backfield from K1 Jakes. As Western Kentucky able to keep pace, particularly with a productive second quarter performance. Middle Tennessee, Northwestern both had the shot at the end of the first half. Neither could score. Western to stop on fourth down of Middle Tennessee. Western could not connect on a field goal, so we're tied at 17. And Antonio Andrews and the Hilltoppers with the ball from the four to start. And a solid return once again for the best return man in the Sun Belt out to the 32 yard line. Middle Tennessee's best rushing game this year is 302 yards, already 202. Take a look at some of these numbers. I think numbers that can be critical to winning and losing. Red zone production, very, very productive for both teams. Third downs, Middle Tennessee State having a heck of a night. And then look at the rush attempts. 31 rush attempts, and the yards and attempts almost double that of Western Kentucky. But the average yards per pass attempt in favor of Western Kentucky, that's how they've stayed in this game, the big plays and big chunks through the air. First and 10 from the 32, Andrews patiently over the 35-yard line. We'll pick up five yards. Give me kind of a perspective on rushing attempts. Western's the dominant time of possession team. Didn't run it as much in the first half. Well, oftentimes, I think rushing yards can be deceiving at times, but rush attempts can often be a reflection of who's in control of the game. Okay. Running the football when you want to, not when you have to. So if you're dictating terms, as we've seen from Middle Tennessee State tonight, and you're just set, simply snapping the ball and running it when you want to, those rush attempts will wear down an opponent. Jake's threw it 14 times in the first 30 minutes. Western leads the nation in time of possession. Middle Tennessee won that battle in the first half. Throw number 15 of the night and intended for Marcus Vasquez. That's really the only poor throw we've seen tonight from Kwan Jakes, the quarterback of Western Kentucky, and trying to hit Vasquez on just a very quick five-yard, really ten-yard hit route right there. Would have brought the ball up a little bit. Would have been an easy first-down catch for Vasquez. 
senior from Chula Vista California missed most of last year with a torn ACL third and five again Western Kentucky number 10 in the country on third down at 51 percent they converted just two of five in the opening half four man rushes Jake's to throw against seven in coverage Andrews got it shy of the first down marker tried to power forward Depending on the spot in that second surge, it may be enough for the first down. Reggie Farmer and Robert Hogg on the stop. They're going to get the first down without even giving a measurement here. As the, as the second half is kicked off here, you're noticing the pace slowing down. If we take a look at the second effort here by Antonio Andrews out of the backfield, falling forward. We always talk about that as a ball carrier, falling forward, running with a forward lead moving the chains for Western Kentucky, but really slowing down the pace on offense. Back to Andrews, the top rusher in the Sun Belt. Good first down carry, pick up five yards. Craig Allen on the stop. We said it in the first half, why is Western Kentucky so good on third down? Because they do their work on the ground on first and second. The Middle Tennessee State defensively knew that coming in. They had to win on first and second down. Force Western Kentucky into uncharted waters for them offensively. Keep in mind, this is a controlled passing game of short to intermediate routes. Going to really attack the middle of the field with H-backs and tight ends. But the Hilltoppers do not want to be in third and long situations. And they've been able to, for the most part, manage that well here tonight. Second and five. Andrews again. Be just shy of the midfield marker. They'll mark him at the 49, so they'll need three more to convert on third down coming up. We talked about the pace of the game for Western Kentucky. That's three plays in a row where K1 Jakes, the quarterback for the Hilltoppers, has allowed the play clock to go down to two seconds before they've snapped the football. He's got the plays, get the signal from the sideline right now. But they're going to come up to the line of scrimmage, slow things down, and keep this Middle Tennessee State offense off the field. Middle Tennessee defensively did a good job on third down of the first half. Third and three to open up the second half, just shy midfield. Raiders load the box. Jakes over the middle, and it is bobbled. Incomplete is the ruling. McNeil couldn't hang on to it. And then a late flag is thrown all of a sudden. K1 Jakes wanted the corner route, and he just didn't have a clear line of sight. Ineligible man. Anybody in the line of scrimmage has to wait until the pass goes past the line of scrimmage before they can work downfield. Middle Tennessee should be able to decline this penalty and set up fourth and three, although at this field position wouldn't shock anybody if Western went for it. They may have lined up in a formation where the tight end was covered up. Made him ineligible downfield. <clears throat> Excuse me, as number 82, Jack Doyle, who's been a big target tonight, I believe, is who that penalty may have been called on. I think that's the explanation given to Willie Taggart right there. Ineligible receiver downfield, number 80. Penalties decline. It's an incomplete pass. The down will count for the fourth down. Uh, the other tight end. The other tight end opposite of him, yes. Mitchell Henry. Sophomore from Elizabethtown, Kentucky. So this will bring the punt unit out for Western Kentucky on the opening drive of this second half. It's a disappointing end to that drive for Willie Taggart's team. They're moving the ball well on the ground. A break field for the punts. Pressure coming, got rid of it. Griswood is going to let this sail over his head. And a good decision, it turns out to be. A net punt of 31 yards as it'll come out to the 20 yard line. The breakfield couldn't pin him deep. Middle Tennessee will have its first touch of the second half with Jordan Parker, the true freshman, having a big night on the ground. I got a beautiful day, bring my face to 
Willie Taggart's punter, Hendricks Breakfield, with a pretty good punt to try to give Middle Tennessee a long field to work with. Had a shot to pin him very deep. But Western Kentucky had about five red jerseys around the football here. Oh, what a missed opportunity. You're going to see number 14, Kareem Peterson, number 19, Cam Thomas, and nobody touches the football. There's five red jerseys standing around it. You think field position couldn't have been absolutely critical there for Western Kentucky on defense had Middle had to start on their own two-yard line. Instead, out to the 20. First drive of the second half for Middle Tennessee, Logan Kilgore. Second most efficient passer in the Sun Belt. has been heavily on his running backs. Jordan Parker, who had a career-high rushing yards in the first half alone, gets stopped by Ramel Lewis, the senior out of Georgia, on his first carry of half number two. Ramel Lewis and Kenny Martin, 95 and 96, uh, the big interior pluggers of this defensive front. Pulling the pattern here. So Parker, 136 yards rushing in the first half alone. Beating his previous career high of 117. Second and nine. Flag is thrown to whistle this play dead. A false start coming up on Middle Tennessee. Before the snap, ball start, number six. Five yard penalty, second down. They should get Amos, the wide receiver, who had a touchdown in the opening half. Western Kentucky was going to line up in man-to-man -man coverage, and there could have been some opportunities downfield in the passing game for the Blue Raiders there. Fortunate for the Hilltoppers that that play was called dead. Play fake to Bryson. Kilgore with pressure coming. Amos for a first down across the 30. What do I like this throw by Logan Kilgore? Quarterback pressure by Darius Washington, number seven, right in the face of the Middle Tennessee State quarterback. And he steps up under duress and throws a strike to the sideline, moving the chains here from Middle Tennessee State. Out to the 34. Middle Tennessee likes to run a lot of plays. They go back to Parker. Move it to about the 38 or so. Montera Smith made the stop against Parker. Second and six coming up for Middle Tennessee. They like to work a very quick pace. Western likes to run the clock a little bit more. Jeremiah Bryson in the backfield. Throwing a block on the play fake. Taking a shot for Amos down the sideline. It was well defended by Cam Thomas. Even if Amos had hauled it in, might have been out of bounds anyway. So it's third and six. Good effort that time from the sophomore. Yeah, also had number nine, Kyle Griswood, right behind Anthony Amos. But again, out of bounds. No opportunity to make the play on the football. We said third down at the top of the telecast was going to be the Biggest key, one of the biggest keys at least tonight. Third and six for Middle Tennessee and an empty set for Kilgore. Seven back in coverage for the toppers. Plenty of time, Kilgore. Looking downfield for Van Horn. It's tipped and it's caught by Amos. Mark him out at the 45-yard line. 18 yards on third and six. Tremendous protection up front. Anthony Amos, Johnny on the spot. Ball's intended for number 87, Vincent Van Horn. Kilgore doing a nice job buying time within the pocket, keeping his eyes downfield. Van Horn's got to secure the football. Fortunate for the Blue Raiders that Anthony Amos is on the spot. Parker on the carry will pick up four yards. Jackson on the stop, go back to the throw. So number six here is going to come. Right behind 87 as he gets popped right there by number 19, Cam Thomas, for Western Kentucky. And a little bit of luck playing a role. Huge third down conversion. Amos bottom of your screen. Thomas defending him. Six in the box for Western. They bring all six. Kilgore against the grain throwing and completing to Christian Collis close to the first down marker. That may be enough to move the sticks. This is a big time throw by Logan Kilgore. 
not only is he throwing his right hander to the left, he's off balance and he throws about a 25 yard rope to the sideline for Christian Collins number 81. That is all Logan Kilgore, the Middle Tennessee State quarterback. Redshirt freshman picks up the first down catch. Setting up at the 33, back to Parker. Stuck in the hole nicely that time for Western Kentucky's defense. There is Keontae Young, already eight tackles on the night. Back to that catch from Collis. Kilgore is going to evade the rush of Andrew Jackson, come back and just throw a BB. Now that's about as good as it gets. That's clinic drill type stuff that you work in the summer, you work in training camp to enable you to make those throws in game type situations. Coaching staff at Middle Tennessee State raved about the arm strength of Logan Kilgore was on display right there. Umpire Tyrone Blanks coming over to the... Uh, to Personal the foul, line. number 93, late hit after the play. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. I don't know if Quantara Smith is frustrated tonight. They call him for a personal foul penalty, the nation's leader in sacks, but he hasn't been in the backfield all that much in this game. And that's going to set it up in the red zone for Middle Tennessee at the 19-yard line, first and 10. The give is to Bryson. Work inside the 15. He'll pick up four yards. This was the penalty on Quantara Smith, who was taken off the field after this play. And working against Isaiah Anderson is the right tackle, right in front of Tyrone Blanks. He must have followed it up with some verbal joust because the official did not pull the flag until after the nudge. You can see, notice some conversation taking place. Second and a half dozen. This is what we saw in that touchdown pass in the first half. Somebody entering the neutral zone for Western, and the center, Micah James, the senior, doing a good job of snapping the football, trying to draw the penalty. We'll see who it's on. Defense, offsides, five-yard penalty. Suck it out. That center, Micah James, has done that twice tonight timely snaps to draw penalties against the Western Kentucky defense and very clearly Willie Tagger not pleased. The free play gives him five to the ten second and one. Drayton Calhoun the LSU transfer is the pistol back. Here he goes inside the five got met right there. But hit by Keontae Young, the safety. It is good enough for a first down. It'll be first and goal. Young has been all over the place tonight with 10 tackles. A good run from Calhoun to move the sticks. Yeah, Keontae Young, number one, Jonathan Dowling. A fine tandem in the back end. Nine tackles on the night so far for Young. First and goal, Jordan Parker, the true freshman, slipped down. There was Dowling, the safety. Second and goal for Middle Tennessee. For those of you who watch Chargers Chiefs tonight, welcome to Bowling Green, Kentucky. Good game tonight. Tied at 17 at the halftime break. Middle Tennessee moving the football well. They've got second and goal at the Western Kentucky Five. Both teams are three and one in the Sun Belt, gunning for the lone share of second place in the conference. Adam Amin, Tom Luganville, and Logan Kilgore, the quarterback for Middle Tennessee, trying to put the Blue Raiders in front. True freshman Parker running left, stopped. Cole Tischer, the senior from Brentwood Academy in Brentwood, Tennessee, helping up to make the stop third and goal from the five. Huge play here in this third quarter. The theme for both of these teams has been bend but don't break on sustained drives by forcing defensive stops inside the 10 yard line. Again, not as much real estate to have to account for. The field condenses, little room for error for the offense. Anthony Amos, bottom of your screen. He's being defended by Tyree Robinson. He was the target in the first half in this area. Kilgore, across for Amos, into the end zone. Middle Tennessee takes the lead on the second touchdown of the night for Anthony Amos.
really impressive drive which started at their own 20 yard line Middle Tennessee marches to take the lead. Carlos Lopez is on for the extra point. Lopez bangs it through. Anthony Amos has had a big night tonight hooking up with Logan Kilgore this evening. We absolutely have earlier in the drive the right place at the right time for Anthony Amos coming off the tip pass to extend this drive. And then underneath quarterback Logan Kilgore, he catches a slip screen and Middle Tennessee State up by seven. ESPNU College Football Primetime is brought to you by your local Scion dealer. And Willie Taggart, the head coach of Western Kentucky, coming back to his alma mater, had his number one jersey, retired in 1999, started his career at Western Kentucky as an assistant, then went to Stanford under Jim Harbaugh, then came back here. And it's really eerie. He pointed this out to us, yeah. how Western Kentucky started to grow. This was when, it was when it was still an FCS school. And his first three years as a player, how it is really eerie to how his first three years as a coach have turned out. If they win out, they'll let land a 10 and 2 for this season. I asked him about it. I said, Is that something that was pointed out to you? He goes, No, I've been keeping track of it. <laughs> you look at that first season, look at the parallels, second season, third season. As a player and as a coach, I played against Willie Taggart. He was a true freshman starting quarterback at Western Kentucky. When I was at Eastern Kentucky as a senior, ended up having over 7,300 rushing yards as a career at Western Kentucky as a player. It'll be Andrews from the goal line. Another solid return for Antonio Andrews out to the 26-yard line. Willie Taggart's the second youngest head coach in FBS. Western Kentucky was the 2002 FCS national champion. They began the transition in 2007 to FBS, started FBS play in 08, full-fledged in the Sun Belt in 09. And Willie Taggart, who, as you can see, had an outstanding career as a player, replaced David Elson, now the D.C. at New Mexico State. They went 0-12 in Elson's first year in FBS, then 2-10. They really struggled. Taggart comes in, goes 2-14 in his first 16 games as the head coach for Western. Then they beat Middle Tennessee on ESPNU in double OT last year. Since then, they're 13-3. And, and on first down, Antonio Andrews with the catch for a half dozen yards. This is an incredible turnaround for this guy, Willie Taggart, one of the hot young head coaches in the country. Oh, and he became a head coach quickly. And you know, Dave Elson, the former head coach here, also deserves a lot of credit. Had to bring this program from the FCS to the FBS level. Didn't originally go into a conference, so you're taking a beating on a lot of weekends, oftentimes for money. And they got into the Sun Belt Conference, which really gave them an identity, allowed them to compete. And Willie Taggart's taken that baton, and he's run with it. Second and three. We're back to Andrews on the ground. The 35 before a progress gives him the 36. He'll pick up two, and that gives him 1,000 rushing yards on the season. Antonio Andrews, the, the top rusher in the Sun Belt, third and short coming up. Keep in mind that Willie Taggart you know, caught on with Jim Harbaugh at Stanford when they took over the Stanford program. That's right. Uh, just a, a horrendous situation. So that blueprint and the process by which he learned under Jim Harbaugh certainly being applied here and coming to fruition. Third and one for Kwan Jakes in the Western Kentucky offense. They go to Andrews, who had a very small window, but should have enough to the fr for the first down to the 43-yard line. I thought it was very interesting when, we, when, when I asked Willie Taggart about the journey. And the one thing he said was, winning isn't complicated, people complicate it. Right. And so what we've tried to do here at Western Kentucky is create an environment of competition where there's an expectation level in everything you do. Academics, athletics, the offseason, the weight room, everything is a competition here at Western Kentucky. His offense, first and 10 from the 43. Back to Andrews, had a big alley that time for a good first down run. Pick up eight yards, second and two coming up. Nice job by the offensive line. Western Kentucky. Outstanding at the point of attack here. You see the lead block up there by the fullback, and then Andrews just navigating with his vision in line. 
Right now, Western Kentucky really playing well up front, kind of looking like Middle Tennessee State looked in that first half. This is more of the pace we expected to see from Western tonight. Jumbo set, and Andrews gets the sideline inside the 40-yard line. Mark him out at the 38, and Kevin Byard finally caught up to him. One of the few perimeter runs we've seen tonight from the Western Kentucky offense yeah. where they've stretched it to the sideline. Very active up front. And Antonio Andrews is leading the Sun Belt Conference in rushing. He's getting a full dose of the carries here tonight. 19 carries tonight. Actually making now 20 carries, and he's over 100 yards. It's the seventh straight game of 100 yards rushing or more for Andrews. He goes back on first down and makes another cut for about three additional yards. He'll pick up a half dozen. The production on first down here in the second half has been really good for Western Kentucky. Well, it's been outstanding. See that graphic right there? We talked about that coming into the game, having six straight games with 100 or more yards. He's the bell cow. They rely upon him. Average yards on first down for Western Kentucky, 6.8. Leon Allen, the tailback, Jake's to throw, good protection, one on one, defenders slip, and Western Kentucky gets a touchdown from McNeil. No, he was out of bounds. Oh my goodness. Second time that McNeil has had a catchable ball. First time he dropped it, this time he stepped out of bounds. It's third down. Chris Sharp, number 27, on the defense at the corner spot. Oh, he runs right by him. He sticks in Willie McNeil. And the ball is thrown too far to the sideline. That may be reviewed here quickly. I'm not so sure that McNeil did not have possession. Right. And one foot inbounds. I think he had the foot inbounds. I think possession is more important on that. Western should slow down right here. Western Kentucky should slow down right here. They're going to snap the football. They have to run the play. And this is a break if the official on the sideline of the... There is no play. The previous play right. is under further review. That was the headlinesman, John Hoffman, who gives Western Kentucky a big break here. We're going to step aside as they review that potential touchdown. This is a huge play in this game, Luke. A huge play. And keep in mind, the one time you want to hurry up is not right <laughs> now, Western Kentucky. Let's let this be reviewed and see if we have a touchdown for the <laughs> They just reviewed the previous play, the throw to Willie McNeil from K1 Jakes. It is a touchdown. This is why we'll take a look at the replay in just a moment. Schwetman is out for the extra point to try to tie this game at 24. And the same thing that Tom and I were talking about going to break. It wasn't the <laughs> foot, the foot was inbounds. Right. It was whether or not McNeil had possession. They went back and looked at it. And they overturned the initial ruling of out-of-bounds. He had possession, plus his left foot down. And Western Kentucky, a point after away from tying it with Schwetman. With the hold of Brakefield. High snap handled well by the punter. And Schwetman banks it through. We're tied at 24. 2.03 to go in the third. This is what they took a look at during the break. I'm not so sure the side judge, right on top of it right there, isn't looking for security of the ball and sees the right foot before he sees the left. This is clearly a touchdown. The ball is secure right here. Left foot goes down. But I think the official is seeing the security of the football on behalf of McNeil and then looking at the foot, and the right foot would go out of bounds first. A well-executed play by the replay booth right. by calling that short in Western Kentucky. I don't mean to be yelling at you <laughs> and screaming at you, but goodness gracious, slow down. <laughs> they, the all one night time, long, all night long you're <laughs> slowing down, and now you want to speed up to the line of scrimmage. The one time they want to let it slow down so that the replay booth can take a look at it, and you make a great point. Gene Hartlib's the replay official tonight. Outstanding job by the replay booth. Side judge was Dan Moore. You can understand why he initially made the call, but good job by the replay booth tonight to call for a replay on that particular play. Willie Taggart's team ties it up. McNeil, who had a drop pass earlier tonight, which would have been a touchdown in the first half, 
is able to haul it in. Jake's having a big night tonight, too. Three touchdown passes for the senior for Western Kentucky. Jesse Roy to kick it away. Momentum twists and turns and shifts back and forth. A couple of three and one teams in the belt going at it tonight. Roy to Watley from the 13. G. Watley got hit initially by Robinson and then he gets swarmed at the 28 yard line. Three great games on ABC and ESPN starting Saturday at noon. Some will see Landry Jones and the Sooners square off against the Iowa State Cyclones. Might get a chance to see one of the good young quarterbacks in the country. Teddy Bridgewater, 10th ranked Louisville, taking on Temple. Over on ESPN, Johnny Football, number 16, Texas A&M, taking on number 15, Mississippi State. Regional coverage presented by Kate Jewelers on ABC. Texas A&M, Mississippi State, brought to you by Cars.com. ESPN, noon Saturday, all three available on Watch ESPN. Jason, Johnny Manziel's like Rocky chasing a chicken <laughs> in the alley. That's state in reference, sir. First and 10 from Middle Tennessee for the 28. Kilgore, might have been a design run that time, it'll slide down shy. <laughs> pick up eight yards there, set up second and short. I don't know if he slipped or if he dove on purpose. We're gonna say he dove on purpose. Sure, give him the benefit Hopefully of the doubt. Hopefully his mother will believe us. <laughs> Are they checking the spot here, perhaps? I like the design call, though. Riley Johnson's our lead official, our white hat tonight. I think maybe, perhaps, they want to check the spot. We got the line judge and the field judge both coming out. The umpire, Tyrone Blanks, is talking with Riley Johnson, as is the head linesman, John Hoffman. There's, there was a whistle blown from the stands. So if you have a whistle, please do not blow it during the play. We're going to replay the down because the defense stopped. Please reset the game clock to the previous play. Like a father telling a son not to do something It'll again. It'll be first down. I told you not to bring that whistle to the that. booth, Adam. I will turn this football game around, so let, let's try to take a listen here. First and 10 for Middle Tennessee for the 28. Kilgore. Might have been a design run that time. It'll slide down shy. <laughs> pick up eight yards there, set up second and short. I don't know if he slipped or if he dove. Either way, they'll replay it from the 28-yard line. And again, minute 27 on the clock. This is a give to Reggie Watley, straight between the tackles, couple of yards, second and eight. Interesting now for two back-to-back -back plays. Jordan Parker, the true freshman, has not been on the field for this Middle Tennessee State offense. Parker, 144 yards on the ground tonight. Watley has carried it three times as well. Jeremiah Bryson, redshirt freshman out of Smyrna, Tennessee, is the back. Gets the play fake. The pump and the toss downfield for Griswold, and it is deflected away. What a play by Keontae Young. He has been outstanding in the safety spot tonight. That's a heads-up play. That's Third down. Fantastic play, but it was aided by this ball. Hanging in the air too long for Logan Kilgore. It was a nice pump fake, but this throw down the seam, you just got to have a little more zip, a little less trajectory. Keontae Young tracing. Obviously, Griswold had a step on the defender. And Dowling coming over to help. Flag is thrown. Play clock is at nine, so it's not a delay call here. Field judge threw it all the way back near midfield. Illegal substitution, 12 men in the formation, five-yard penalty against the defense, still third down. Still third down to be third and manageable here for about three yards. Going back to that play for Young, he didn't see the ball. I think he was just looking at Griswold's hands. Yeah, he was looking at his eyes. Sure. When those eyes start getting big as the ball starts coming out of the sky, give you a sense of when you need to start either looking back or getting those hands up. Middle Tennessee, 7 of 10 on third down. Play fake to Parker. Screen thrown out to Amos for a first down. Out of bounds on a big leap at the 46-yard line. Made that Griswold, I should say. He'll pick up the first down, a dozen-yard gain. That was a well-called play. Inside, Western Kentucky fully expecting the run. Logan Kilgore comes out, hits number nine. 
Griswood, he does the rest, extending the play, and Little Tennessee State marches on. There is Jordan Parker, the true freshman, got hit by Andrew Jackson late. Taran Williams was the first guy to touch him, and then Jackson finished off the tackle. Maybe a yard of the play. Second and nine inside of a minute for quarter number three. Just what we expected tonight. Here's Bryson. Into Western Kentucky territory to the 48. Arias right the cornerback on the stop. They don't have to run a play here. We'll see if they decide to talk it over or go for the first down on third and six. The middle Tennessee is going to take it to the sideline and talk it over. Maybe one of the biggest plays of the game so far. There have been a lot of them tonight. Stick around. This game went to two overtimes a year ago. It was a one-point game two years ago, and we're tied through 45 minutes tonight. Two teams coming in at 3-1 and one in the Sun Belt. This is a matchup that will determine who has the lone share of second place in the Sun Belt Conference, a deep and dangerous conference. Stick around. Quarter four next. Start of the fourth quarter in Bowling Green. Big Red getting them fired up at Houchin Smith Stadium. A rivalry that goes back to 1914. Western Kentucky and Middle Tennessee having a great ball game tonight with second place on the line. Jordan Parker, the true freshman, a career high for Middle Tennessee on the ground. Kaywon Jakes, three touchdowns through the air for Western Kentucky. Antonio Andrews has over 100 yards rushing for the Hilltoppers as well. In a matchup that went to double overtime last year was determined by one point two years ago. Both teams at three and one, and Middle Tennessee starts quarter four at third and six in Western Territory. Seven on the line for Western Kentucky. Four in the pattern for Logan Kilgore. Setting up the screen, and his running back fell down. Bryson was the back. He slipped and fell, and it may have been enough for a first down if Bryson would have caught it fourth and six. It may have been enough for a touchdown in Lexington because that's how far <laughs> he could have ran before anybody would have touched him. This is so unfortunate. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. Jeremiah Bryson would have been off to the races so well executed by Logan Kilgore on the pump fake. And Josh Davis on to punt to Antonio Andrews, the most dangerous return man of the conference. <laughs> 37 yard punt, Andrews lost the football. Ball still loose, and if Middle Tennessee has it, they'll have it in the red zone. Middle Tennessee has taken the football inside the Western Red Zone. Andrews with the mistake. A rare miscue by one of the most sure-handed guys in the Sun Belt. But look at the ball. It's on the inside. That's where the problem comes. If he's got the ball on his outside, you can protect yourself and the football from any inside penetrators. The forced fumble that time by number 30, Stephen Roberts. Outstanding job and tremendous starting field position now for Middle Tennessee State with Reggie Watley, number 25, on the fumble recovery. And they set it up at the 18-yard line. First turnover in a very well-played game by either side. The true freshman, Parker, ducking down for a short gain. Andrew Jackson, the middle linebacker, came up to fill the hole after a gain of one yard. Second and nine, red zone scoring, making sure you get six instead of three. Huge tonight for both of these teams. And they've been outstanding, as you can see right here. That red zone production, most notably taking advantage of turnovers. We've seen our first miscue here tonight. Second and nine for Kilgore. Bottom of your screen, it's Christian Collis. In the slot, it's Griswood. Amos, top of your screen. Those are the receivers out there for Kilgore. It'll be a give to Parker. Another short game. Be third and about eight to go. They need to get to the eight-yard line to keep the drive alive. 
crowd's going to make some more noise here in Bowling Green. They've converted two out of every three on third down tonight. Five in the pattern for Logan Kilgore on an empty set. Again, nobody in the middle of the field. Just a four-man rush. Underneath, there goes Bryson. Trying to make a move. He'll be stopped shy of the goal line, but it's good enough to set up first and goal. One of two things are going to happen with that alignment. You're either going to get a quarterback draw because there's nobody in the middle of the field at the linebacker level, or you get the underneath slip screen. Once again, they go back to the unbalanced line here, as we saw in the first quarter. It's a pitch to Bryson. Missed tackle, and then the rest of the defense swarms. That ball came loose at the end of the play. I believe it was Griswold that got back on top of it. Griswold or Bryson? It was Bryson. Number 19, Cam Thomas is the initial defender here. Keeping outside leverage to come in. And then Andrew Jackson. Number 31 as well. Taron Williams, Williams yep. yeah. That ball was loose. It looked like Griswold and Bryson both got it. Watley in motion. They give to Parker. Between the tackles, gets stuffed shy of the goal line. It'll be third and goal from about the two. Keontae Young, the safety, who has been all over the field tonight making big plays, came up to fill the hole, make the hit, set up third and goal. Well, he did because initially there was a hole to slice through, and it closed quickly. Again, this field condenses and can stack the line of scrimmage a little bit. We have not seen many attempts, if any, in the passing game once Middle Tennessee State has gotten inside the 10 yard line outside of the opportunity they took when Western Kentucky jumped off sides. Kilgore. Watley. Make it Parker. And he just stops shy. Once again, Tyree Robinson makes the stop. Dowling and Robinson, the safety and the cornerback, teaming up to stop Parker, and it brings up fourth and goal. Still over 11 minutes left, so Lopez is going to come on for the field goal. He's made a 19-yarder already in this game. This will be from 19. Same thing happened to Middle Tennessee on their first drive of the night. Had a great drive, stalled in the red zone, had to settle for three. On a difficult angle to try to put it through, Lopez puts Middle Tennessee in front. Western Kentucky is the number one defense in the conference. Bend but don't break. They nearly escaped. Lost that football. Middle Tennessee had a great chance. Could not convert. Western Kentucky fumbles on a punt return. Middle Tennessee takes over, gets three points, gets the lead. With second place in the Sun Belt on the line, back with Tom, I'm Adam. Give me the biggest takeaway from the first 49 minutes. Give me something to look for in the final 11 minutes. Both teams have been balanced, have been able to run the football, but really what it comes down to is Western Kentucky has had two big plays in the passing game that have resulted in 14 points. Your coaches talk about it all the time. Do not give up big plays, and on offense, how many plays are you going to get of 25 or more yards? That's what I've taken away from the first three quarters. And now when you take a look at going forward in the fourth quarter here, it's going to come down to who doesn't make that dramatic error. We've seen one now from Western Kentucky, really their only error on the night. Can Middle Tennessee State force another and take advantage? And it could have been a lot worse. Western coughed up the ball at their own 18. Middle Tennessee had first and goal, could not punch it in for a touchdown. They settle for three from Lopez, who kicks it away. It was Andrews who had the miscue, this time from the two. Best return man in the Sun Belt. With purpose out to the 24-yard line. ESPN College Football available anytime, anywhere on your computer or mobile device via WatchESPN.com. And the watch ESPN app. I know Luke loves it on his flights. I love it on the iPad. 
And download it now at the App Store on Google Play as well. Watch ESPN.com. You know what I love? I love the Western Kentucky mascot, Big Red. <laughs> I wonder if Grimace is his dad. I'm smiling. I just didn't know what to say. First and 10 <laughs> from the 24. Thrown out the screen to Willie McNeil, who's got a touchdown in this second half. He'll work out to the 29, pick up five. He'll strap random out of bounds. Again, just taking advantage of that two-on-one situation out on the perimeter. We've got one receiver to be able to stock block and the other to catch the ball. Look at him. Look at Big Red. Nobody knows what he is, but nobody cares. They're in love with him. He's a hilltop. And, I, and I'll tell you, he is a hilltop. I think he's trimmed down a little bit. He actually, he, you and I kind of saw him at first. We're like, shouldn't he be bigger? Look, he's he eating looks, fans. Looks, but he's, it, it's proportions. It, portion yeah, control. it's portion control. And then he was doing some calisthenics early. Second and five. There is Andrews. Got the first down across the 35. Marking down 39-yard line. Picks up 10 yards to move the sticks. Shifty, impressive, darting back. This is one of those backs, Antonio Andrews. It's got a little bit of everything. He's got some power to lower the shoulder right there and drive with his legs. Got enough shiftiness to elude the initial uh, defender and, and extend plays after contact. Kind of a jack of all trades type. One of the main reasons why he's leading this conference in Russia. Look at the change for Western Kentucky, controlling the tempo and pace since the first quarter. Andrews lines up top of the screen. Little comeback route for the catch. Down at the 46. Good gain of seven. It sets up second and three. We talked about the running back position for Willie Taggart. Not just Western, but Willie Taggart. Running backs coach under Jim Harbaugh. Who did he have? The Dope Walker Award winner in Toby Gerhardt. Then he had Bobby Rainey for a couple of years. Outstanding. Now playing for the Baltimore Ravens. So two NFL guys under Willie Taggart. It's a lot to live up to, but Andrews is doing a really nice job well, in this it, offense. Yeah, and it's an offense that accentuates the run game. It's going to feature a downhill presence and a two-back play-action passing game, short and controlled into the short and intermediate areas. Doyle in motion into the slot. Good lead blocking that time for Andrews, who needed the 49. Very close to it. Depends on the spot here if it'll move the sticks. Either first and 10 or third and short near midfield coming up. That'll be enough for the first down for Antonio Andrews. 128 yards on the night. Willie Taggart's offense. Under nine to go, fourth quarter. This time a play fake. Setting up the screen to Kadeem Jones for a first down. Really good game. Mark him down at the 29-yard line. 21 yards. Justin Jones finally got to him. First and 10 at the 29 for Western Kentucky. Down by three. Adam Amin, Tom Luganville in Bowling Green. Great Sun Belt matchup. Two teams coming in at three and one. The winner will have sole possession of second place in a conference that's trying to get two or maybe even three, maybe even four teams in the picture for bowl games. Western's already bowl eligible after being snubbed last year. Middle Tennessee with a win becomes bowl eligible. Huge game in the conference and national scope for these two teams tonight. First and 10 Western at the 29 yard line. And Kwan Jakes will use the first Hilltopper timeout. timeout. And we will take it with them with 8.05 to go in the fourth. If you're just tuning in, stick around. Western's driving, trying to take the lead. ESPNU College Football Primetime is brought to you by AutoZone. For the auto parts, accessories, and advice you need, get in the zone, AutoZone. <laughs> this is Tom's favorite moment of the night so far. Big Red, Look. mascot Hall of Fame. I don't know who put it together, but I approve indefinitely. He's a Hall of Famer. Oh, yeah, I don't, again, this is this is an outstanding list. It is. Feel free to tweet Luge if you think there's somebody missing on that. I think he's responsible for it. Yeah, where, where's the orange? The Syracuse. He's a happy little he's mascot. He's an offshoot of Big Red. Sure. Apparently they're all they're all offshoots of Grimace. Apparently, I'm up the tree from Stanford. 
Now you're now you're second guessing the, the list. You're second guessing the no, list. No, I'm just looking for future inductees. Western is driving at the 29 of Middle Tennessee, down three with eight minutes to go. K1 Jakes in the play fake. Everybody covered downfield. Now being chased, he's got space for the first down. Out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Inside the Middle Tennessee red zone. Great coverage. Jakes makes something out of it, first and 10. K1 Jakes wanted to be able to come backside and throw to Antonio Andrews, leaking out of the backfield, but he's covered. This is a wise veteran move by K1 Jakes. Dirko Nolan, 89 in pursuit. Rather than throw the ball into a crowd, you tuck the football, take what the defense gives you, move the chains, and have your team in scoring position. That's an outstanding veteran move by K1 Jakes. We keep harping on it because it's been such an essential portion of the game tonight. A couple of Western's touchdowns have come outside the red zone, but red zone efficiency all year has been big for these teams. Antonio Andrews, strong run up the middle. Forward progress will give him the 10, five yard gain. Christian Henry, the middle linebacker on the stop, second and five. This is one of the few sustained drives we've seen from Western Kentucky where they haven't somehow come up with points with a big play through the air. They're gonna have to punch it in here with some red zone, of red zone efficiency, very strong as you've mentioned all year long. Kwan Jakes' leadership was in question when he first got to Western. This is a big drive for the senior leader. Back to throw. Towards the end zone. Good defense from Chris Sharp. He was looking for Willie McNeil. And Sharp undercut that route. Big play by the sophomore. Brings up third and five. Big play by the sophomore for the pass deflection, but should have been an INT. And he knows it. I really think Kwan Jakes forced this one a little bit and didn't get an awfully sharp break out of Willie McNeil, number 10, his intended target. Seemed to drift upfield on him a little bit as saw Sharp undercut him. They break the huddle with nine on the play clock. And Jakes needs to use that second timeout. We'll take that break as well. 6.48 to go. Third and five for Western coming up. Do they take the lead? Do they have to settle for three? Let's find out next. Back in Bowling Green, Kentucky with a barn burner in the Sun Belt Conference as Middle Tennessee State leads Western Kentucky with just under seven minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And nice little huddle taking place on the Western Kentucky sideline. And Seeing a lot of lobbying for what plays should be called, and I can promise you, if any receivers are in that huddle right now, they're all wide open. They can all beat the guy that they're lined up upon, and if you've ever been in the coaching profession, you know exactly what I'm talking about. 6.48 to go. Western Kentucky has not led in this game. They trailed 10-0 early. Middle Tennessee scored on its first two drives of this game to take a 10-0 lead. Western Kentucky searching for the first lead of the night. You see Willie McNeil, number 10. Yep. He, he's talking to Kwan Jakes, and now they put him on the sideline. Oh, man. He didn't make his case. Right. This is a big third and five from the 10. Design run for Jakes. A flag is thrown on the near sideline. He gets swarmed and hit. Patrick McNeil the first to get there, the defensive tackle. We'll have to see what the penalty marker is about on the near sideline. Illegal shift. Or maybe illegal motion, my apologies. Looks like middle may decline. Illegal motion by the offense. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. So this sets up about a 27, 28 yard field goal for Garrett Schwetman, the true freshman. Yeah, and it's been a little touch and go for Schwetman so far in this game. This is a bigger and more difficult field goal than you might think given the range and the yardage. That 47-yard miss was the longest attempt this year. His longest field goal made was that 29-yarder earlier tonight. Breakfield on the hold to tie the game. And once again, for the third time tonight, we are tied up.
Middle Tennessee's offense back on the field. We're tied at 27. A lot of key plays over the course of the night tonight, Luke. You've got to limit errors and capitalize on big mistakes. Look at Western Kentucky jump offside. Middle Tennessee State has the wherewithal to take advantage. Takes a shot, comes down with it with a touchdown to Anthony Amos. Gets one foot down, secures the football. Again, a Western Kentucky miscue. Here's the second one, late in the second half. Antonio Andrews carried a bulk of the load on offense. That leads to a field goal for Middle Tennessee State. Now just followed up by the field goal from Western Kentucky and their kicker, Garrett Sweatman, to put us where we're at right now, tied up at 27. Middle Tennessee has dominated the series as of late. Remember, Western won last year in two overtimes. Western has not beaten Middle Tennessee at home since 1989, 23 years. Mind you, this was a series that wasn't played for a bulk of the 90s. Then these two teams were in FCS. Then they were in the OVC together. Then Middle Tennessee went to the FBS level. Western Kentucky a few years later joined. Since 2009, they have been rivals in the Sun Belt Conference. And the last two meetings since Willie Taggart took over at Western have been decided by a total of four points split between these two teams. And a double overtime contest a year ago. What a thriller last season. We got another one tonight shaping up. Roy the kick. Watley from the four. Reggie Watley had an alley. If he can switch fields, he's got space. Reggie Watley into the clear. Reggie Watley all the way home. 94 yards. Touchdown. First touchdown of the season, longest return of the year. Kickoff coverage is about lane integrity. And Western Kentucky loses their lane integrity on the outside here. And the explosive Watley exploits it on the perimeter and it speed the rest of the way. He had had a really good night tonight. Several explosive returns finally broken. Carlos Lopez puts Middle Tennessee right back in front in a heartbeat. And Watley, the redshirt sophomore from Rome, Georgia, second in the conference in kickoff return yardage. He is dangerous, and he finally broke through for 96. An explosive water bug, very decisive, finds a crease, and then he turns on the Jets. One missed ankle tackle there, and then it's just a foot race. A foot race drawn by Reggie Watley. Outrunning the field. And what a huge play. You hear it over and over again. Limit mistakes. Limit big plays. Have some big plays in the kicking game. And as this game has gone down the stretch, we've seen a turnover by Western Kentucky in the kicking game. And now they give up another kicking game play with a kickoff return to Reggie Wadley. We keep seeing it from start to finish. A momentum shift, a drive stalling here with a big defensive stand, a touchdown here, long run here, long return here, and it keeps swinging back and forth in a game that, frankly, I don't think we're shocked by at all tonight. Well, we've got two of the most efficient passers in the Sun Belt Conference, good skilled athlete, and balanced to run the football when they want to. Watley's second in the conference in kick return yardage. Andrews is first. Can he come back with a big play? Same spot, four yard line. 17-yard return, mark him down at 21. Long field. Steven Roberts with the special teams tackle. Full day of college football coming up on Saturday. Big rivalry game in the SEC. Vanderbilt squaring off with Kentucky to kick things off at noon. Then at 3.30, Boilermakers against the Nittany Lions. Nittany Lions top of the leaders division. Then at 7, Big East matchup, UConn, South Florida, both looking for their first conference wins. Also available on Watch ESPN, our college football triple header on Saturday. He's responsible for the lead. 
Andrews picks up a couple of yards on first down. Tackle made by T.T. Barber, the true freshman who's back from an injury tonight. Second and eight coming up. Just a lot of time in Western Kentucky with only one timeout remaining. We've seen it a couple of times. Miscommunication out of the huddle. And there was in the red area last time where I can understand because you want to make sure you don't make an error there, but two big ones, you only end up with three points and then give up the touchdown on the ensuing kickoff. Bad snap, ball loose, and Jakes jumps back on top of it. It's a loss of nine yards to set up third and long. The first time those words have ever left your mouth tonight, Adam. On either right, side. Was right now. Third and long for an offense that prides itself on being in third and two to five. So now you take yourself out of your comfort zone. You have a short to intermediate passing game that you rely upon. Look at the three and outs this season. Only eight on the whole year. They played Alabama earlier this year, too. Third and long, and the out route to McNeil. It's going to be short of the first down marker, though. The marker was at the 32. Farmer and Gilstrap both closed in quickly to make the stop. 15-yard pickup. It's going to bring up fourth and two. Big decision here. Four minutes, just above four minutes and counting right now. I don't think this is a very big decision. I think you've got to go ahead. You've got over four minutes to go. You're backed up. This is going to be interesting, to say the least. Here we go. Biggest play of the game right now, fourth and two. Middle Tennessee brings five. McNeil over the middle for a first down and more. Makes another man miss inside of Middle Tennessee territory, down to the 46. Gutsy call, big catch, first down. Everybody loves the end result when it's executed correctly. <laughs> if that play had not converted, whoa. That's the second fourth down conversion from Minus territory for Western tonight. Two big calls. Now everybody breathes a little easier for the time being. 3.30 on the clock and counting. Fourth quarter, one timeout. Down by seven. Jones is the fullback. And it's a designed run for Jakes. I think there was mis mis miscommunication in the backfield there, Adam. Actually, yeah, I think you're right. A botched uh, handoff and, and wise by K1 Jakes. Again, another veteran move to not try and stick the ball in late, risk that ball going down on the carpet. Eat it, move forward. They gained about a half a yard, live to play the next down. Senior from St. Augustine, Florida. On second and nine. Play fake to Andrews, blocking for him. Taking a shot, looking for McNeil, and he overthrew his intended target. That'll bring up third and nine. McNeil, 106 yards tonight through the air for the sophomore from Bradenton, Florida. Dierko Nolan, number 89. We've mentioned his name an awful lot, as well as 85, Omar McClendon. Breathing down the neck of quarterback K1 Jenks for Western Kentucky. Really forcing a bit of an early throw, an overthrow. Intended downfield on the deep post, and now again, two back-to-back -back third and long situations. This is again four down territory. Third and nine for Jakes. Pressure coming from McClendon. Got rid of it to Andrews. That ball is loose. It's an incomplete pass. And fourth and nine coming up. Sharp jarred it loose before Andrews could gain possession. And McClendon busted through that line to pressure Jakes. All right, last time we had an entirely different situation. It was fourth and about four. This time you're fourth and nine. So now your passing game has to get you to the yard to gain. Again, I reemphasize the fact that this offense predicated on short to intermediate stuff, a lot of involvement with tight ends, two and three tight end packages. But now you got to know that route structure is critical on the yard to gain offensively. They need the 36 on fourth and nine. Only a four-man rush. 
Not a lot of room to throw. And it is a first down to Andrews inside the 35-yard line. Middle Tennessee State goes man-to-man -man defense, which means a linebacker is matched up on the tailback. This time it's a walk-down safety, Kevin Byer, number 20, on Antonio Andrews. Really a mismatch as Andrews has been proven to be very effective in the passing game tonight for this Western Kentucky offense. Two minutes left, one timeout. First and 10 at the 34. Play fake Jakes, has the screen to Jones if he wants it. Instead, down the field to McNeil. Catch number seven tonight, and he's down to the 21 first down. This is what's called a comeback route. You're gonna sell the deep route, you're gonna come back to the sideline. Well executed, an inside release that time by number 10. Willie McNeil gets back behind the corner, in front of the safety. A good conversion as Rick Stockstill, the head coach at Middle Tennessee State, looks on. Clock stopped 147. Doyle motions out. Another pass, good protection. Jake's over the middle, and it was tipped and picked off. Intercepted by Gilstrap with a minute 39 remaining. Reggie Farmer got the tip, and Kenneth Gilstrap, his second pick of the year. Well, if you remember in the first half, an attempt down the seam to a tight end was tipped by Craig Allen, number 35, Middle Tennessee State's other linebacker, which prevented a touchdown. This is a similar seam route down the right pass, just outside of it. The right intention by Kwan Jakes, just not quite enough trajectory. That ball would have been tough to complete as the safety number 36. Juwan Harley was closing in from the middle of the field. Parker gets the run with a minute 34 left. And what a performance in this second half by the defense for Middle Tennessee. That is their third and final timeout of the second half. Minute 34 to go. Clock running out on Western Kentucky. Middle Tennessee looking for a big one on the road. Seven point lead, Middle Tennessee. They've got the ball deep in their own territory. 94 seconds left. Winner gets second place. Lone share in the Sun Belt. A first down will win this game. On, it's second and nine. A first down will win it right now for Middle Tennessee. No timeouts left for Western Kentucky. That's Jordan Parker, the true freshman, a career night. He's in his own end zone behind Logan Kilgore. Western Kentucky stacks the box. They get the stop on second down. Keontae Young, another tackle in double figures tonight. They can run this clock down to, what, about 55 or so. And then they still have to run one more play. They got to run another play here coming up on third down. Now, here's the key. If they, for some reason, cannot get the first down, they got to stay inbounds. They got to get another set of 40 seconds rolling and utilize as much of this clock. Now, the scary thing for you, if they don't get a first down, they are backed up, have to punt. They are in danger of having a punt block when you're backed up. So they've got to have max protect if they get themselves in that situation, obviously. They See Rick Stock still right here. He calls it. They still have three timeouts to work with. A big luxury right now. That is their first charge of the second half. This will be a 30-second timeout. 30-second timeout. We're 48 seconds away from one of these teams picking up a big win. Bama LSU. Big preview, plus the blogger throwdown coming up. Is Notre Dame for real? Plus the under the radar players for this weekend. Danny, Reese, Marianella, DJ Rob Swift, Unite is coming up next. As soon as we're done in Bowling Green with one of these teams getting sole possession of second place. Again, if they get a first down, it's over. If they don't get a first down, the clock probably runs down to about eight seconds. You call a timeout and then you decide what to do. Well, you decide, well, you know what you're going to do. Well, you're going to punch, <laughs> right, yeah, right. But again, where you're located at on the field is always a danger zone here when you're backed up in particular, and you're playing against a team now in Western Kentucky that's got nothing to lose. 
They're going to come at you with full force. Would you take a knee, run the clock down, call timeout, and punt it away, not even risk uh, anything crazy happening? I don't happening? know if you need to do that. Okay. I think, I, I think you run your offense the best you can. Dance with who brung you, and that's Jordan Parker. Behind Kilgore. Third and nine. This is your game. Stop is made by Western Kentucky. This clock is going to go all the way down to about four or five seconds here. Middle Tennessee will likely use its final, or uh, one of its final two timeouts and then punt it away. What about safety? The only other thing to even consider right now, do you take the safety and then move the, the field position up and then free kick it away? That is a potential possibility. Absolutely it is. Again, eight on the play clock, so it's a five difference. So five seconds going to be on the clock. The middle uses this timeout. Timeout, Middle Tennessee. That is their second charge in the second half. This will be a 30 second timeout. Special teams plays have seemingly decided this game, Luke's. Big return from Watley for the lead. Remember that mistake earlier in the quarter by Andrews that gave Middle Tennessee the ball inside of the red zone as well. Well, I think you're correct, Adam. And what we may see here is Rick Stockstill, the Middle Tennessee State head coach, talks to his quarterback, Logan Kilgore, is to drop back, burn as much time as you can. That's going to be tough to burn Take five the safety. Seconds. Okay. All right. You may get down to one second. If Logan Kilgore can run around and evade, this game could be over. If That's not, great point. Excellent if point. not, you take the safety, you kick it off, and they're all, and then you better cover. Right. But there's an opportunity. We're going to find out how good an athlete Logan Kilgore is right now <laughs> and see what they do with him. So they're taking the punt return team off for Western. They're bringing, in the, they're bringing the house here. So Kilgore is going to take the snap. He needs to burn five. Come out, run around, run and around. Looking run at the around. clock, down to one, down to zero, takes the safety, ball game over. Leagues, you called it, heads up call from Rick Stockstill, and Middle Tennessee is by its lonesome in second place the the in the Sun Belt with a big win on the road, 34 to 29. That's outstanding game management by Rick Stockstill and his coaching staff, understanding the situation, knowing how to take advantage of it, and trusting that the front people could hold up long enough and that your quarterback would do the right thing, able to evade and burn that time off the clock. Outstanding end of the game for the Blue Raiders and a well-deserved win. A hard-fought ball game for both ball clubs. Western down to three and two. Middle Tennessee is four and one. And this is the final play of the game. Very well executed. You could see Logan Kilgore actually look up yeah. behind him to the scoreboard to see if he could pull it off. Excellent call, well executed by Kilgore. And Middle Tennessee to four and one in the Sun Belt. Unite's coming up, big previews of all the big games this weekend coming up. Great job by our crew at Bowling Green tonight. Middle Tennessee with a 34 to 29 victory. For Tom Luganville, rest of our crew, Adam Amin saying good night. Here's Unite.